Dave Medica, and uh, Victor wants to make sure you're aware that he's, he's also recording this on his phone. Okay, that's fine. All right. Um, uh, what we're here is we're here to interview uh, Victor Lopez. It is uh, November 14th. It is at 8:55 a.m. in the morning, and uh, just so we can let you know who's in the interview with us. Um, go ahead, uh, Victor Lopez. All right, I'm Sergeant Keith Bidler, Deputy uh, Vega, M-I-T-T-I-G-A. And, uh, and Cor then, uh, Corporal John Ramsey, uh, and I am uh, doing this via phone. Via phone, yes. Yeah. Um, before we get started. Uh, uh, Victor, I'm aware that you do have an attorney. Yes. And that you're here. You, you uh, let me go back just a little bit. You called me the other night. And uh, you and uh, Stephen, Stephen, Stephen and Crowell called me the other night and said that you guys were interested in talking to us. Yes. And I explained to you that they you both have attorneys. Uh, you're more than welcome to call us. You're more than welcome to come in if you want to talk to us. But I can't initiate any phone calls or interviews. Is yes. that correct? Yes. And then you guys called me last night again and said that you wanted to meet today. Yes. Okay, so I just want to put that on the record that, that the Sheriff's Office didn't reach out to you too. You guys reached out to us. Yes, we did. Okay. Um, okay, so what we're here is, is uh, we're conducting an uh, investigation on the company Metro State. Um, yes. It's actually, there's a LLC, and that Jeremy DeWitt is the owner. Yes. And it's my understanding that you're an employee for Jeremy DeWitt. Yes, I am. Okay, how hey, long? Hey, Keith? Yeah. Keith, before we continue, let's uh, swear him in as well. I'll go ahead and swear him in. Victor, you son of a... Hey, guys, thanks for watching PT's Far Removed Uncle. As you know, we're going to listen to the 2019 interview with Victor Lopez, Jeremy's one of num Jeremy's number one men. He's made a lot of appearances in the Jeremy DeWitt case. And as you heard, he's going to be interviewed by the famous Sergeant Keith Vidler and the famous Corporal John Ramsey. So let's go ahead and get on into it and hear what he has to say. Do is I'm going to just ask a couple of questions and then I'm going to let um, Corporal Ramsey basically. He, he's one of the, one of the lead investigators, okay. he and I. Yeah. And so, um, but anyways, uh, I just want to establish that. How long have you worked for Metro State? I've been about there four years on and off. Four years on and off. Yeah. And uh, what, what's your job kind of work? Um, my first, in the first year I was a photographer. I met him at the Veterans Day Parade, um, and then I met my son, well, she said, I would like to work with you, I'm a photographer. Um, I started as a photographer maybe about six months, seven months, and he told me he'd really like to be a driver. I said, okay, yeah, sure, I'll be a driver. And I didn't put no application out, I didn't put nothing since, since day one at all. Um, and then ever since then, I've been driving cars and running escorts with him. Okay. Um, go ahead, John. Hi, right, Victor. Uh, what's your job title? Uh, well, he, uh, he always told us, well, dri a driver at first, that's what I was first aware of, the driver. And then after when I asked him, you know, if someone asks us in public, who are we? He goes, tell we're a state-approved agency or state-approved agent. Okay, but what is your what is your job title? Are you a manager? Are you a supervisor? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just a... Uh, a regular, regular officer. I don't have no rank, no nothing like that. I'm just, yeah. Okay. What is the organization of the, the company? In other words, sure. like, like in the, yeah, like in the sheriff's office, you have the sheriff, the under sheriff, you have, uh, you know, uh, chief deputies, yeah. you have majors, you have captains. Is there a rank structure yeah. within Metro State? There is, but it's not very good. But Jeremy's the motor commander. Um, Ken, Ken Deline, he's the captain. Um, Andrew Ross is the lieutenant. Um, Alan Smith is the uh, sergeant. Brandon Brochus is the uh, sergeant or corporal, one of those two. Um, Stephen Legrand, he was the first. He was, uh, he was um, um, corporal or staff sergeant um, that went back when he used to work with us. And then he came back and he's just a sergeant somehow. Um, but me, I was, I was a... I was a uh, PFD fire first class at one time, and then that's when I left the company for about six months, seven months, and then he never trusted me again and put me as a regular officer. Okay. When you say he didn't trust you, what do you mean? Um, because when I used to work there, I, I took some lights out of him because, um, you know, I would just take it and try to sell it. And I only took, like, maybe, like, five or six lights from him without his permission. And, you know, he told me, he was like, you know, I... I treated you like a son, you know, you're a great guy, you're a great kid. I don't know why you did that from me, 
and he just told me, he's like, listen, you're fired. And then six months later, he contacted me back. He's like, you know, I care for you a lot. Um, you want your job back? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, and he hired me back. Okay. And what are your duties? What do you do? Um, my duties, basically when I get there, um, I usually, most of the time I wash the cars, I detail the cars. Um, sometimes I do inventory for him. Um, I post stuff on eBay for him also. Um, I organize the office. I'm the one that basically set up the cameras. Um, so mainly like an IT person. Um, I went to school for computers, so I basically set up all the cameras, did everything for him. Um, you know, on escorts, basically like I said, listen to him, do what he says to do. Um, and mainly that's it. Okay. Say, so, hey, I don't take this wrong, but I want to reiterate something to you, okay? Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, you're coming in here today because we're telling you we're willing to work with you, correct? Yeah. Okay. You have to be completely honest because if I find that you're lying about anything or that you're yeah. skirting away from the truth on anything, then that, that deal's not going to be the same, okay? Okay. So you need to make Can sure when I, when I ask questions, you're completely honest with me, and if you forget something and you remember it while we're talking, you come back to it. But you cannot, okay. you cannot lie to us, because if you do, that's not going to help you, and it's not going to help yeah. us, okay? Okay. Can you rephrase, rephrase it a little bit? Okay. Better, like, rephrase, so yeah. what, what exactly do you do for Jeremy... Uh, Jeremy and his business. I know you said you wash cars, you sell stuff on eBay, uh, you do IT stuff, like setting up the cameras. Do you maintain body camera footage? Do you? Oh yes, yeah, that's, that's also something I do. Um, that I don't know, you know, like that. Um, usually when I at the end of the end of the day for everybody, um, basically only the drivers because they had a different person in charge of motors. Um. Most of the time, I'll up go, upload all the body camera footage into the into the computer, and whatever was like, say if the escort was just going and there was nothing being involved, um, he would want me to delete that. If there was an encounter with the sheriff's office or encounter with anyone, he'd want me to keep it on the computer because he said he needed it just to have it. Um, sometimes, sometimes I would upload the the motors cameras, and the same thing would be the same thing. Um, I upload anything with an encounter or anything that he was running sirens or one of us was running sirens and he would want that just to have it because he, you know, it would look cool. Um, but anything that was just regular, we would, we would delete. All right, how often do you download the videos? Is it daily? Um, Is it weekly? Is it no, monthly? Or just when he tells I would, you? I would say weekly because sometimes, you know, most times, like, if he's in a bad mood, he won't even tell me to do it. I'll just do it because that's what he told me my job was to upload the cameras because you know, he didn't know how to, supposedly he didn't know how to do all that stuff. Um, most people just didn't know how to do it, so most people, they trusted me with it. And like I said, I, I put everything into his computer and uploaded everything onto the computer. And like I said, whatever wasn't wasn't really, like, really good, just delete it. Um, so I would say weekly and maybe sometimes daily if the, if the cameras were, were getting at a point where they were really backed up. Okay. So, for example, the cameras in the cars that are on the mirrors or that are uh, on the dash or whatever, how often would you download those? Um, the ones that are plugged on the on the windshield, those I upload. The ones that are plugged on the that are mounted, those they have a 24-hour uh, reload. So if you leave the camera on 24 hours, everything that was before gets deleted. So most of the time when I upload those, which I rarely touch because you know always at, at night time they get relooped. I don't usually touch those, but sometimes I do, and those I still upload to the computer. But the thing is with those, I rarely touch those because. They don't come out unless you yank it off or you uh, turn it over at a tight corner and get something to pinch out the memory cards. But sometimes when I do that, I forget which memory card was what. But the dash cams are attached to the windshield. I actually take those out and bring those inside with me and upload them. Okay. And <clears throat> how often do you do those? Uh, same thing daily or weekly. If we have no, if there's no escorts at all, um, I won't I won't upload. Um, if there is escorts throughout the whole week, then I'll start. You know, taking them out the car every day. If there's escorts throughout the whole week, and upload them into the computer so that on a brand new day, the whole the whole memory card is wiped out. So, would you do? Would you download just uh, if you have one escort? Would you go out there and take the time to download everything if you know you just have one escort coming up? Uh, sometimes, sometimes I would, sometimes I won't. It, it's rare. It, it all depends if honestly, if my mood, if if I really do want to work. Sometimes I'm at the office for what. Eight hours a day, nine hours, sometimes ten hours, sometimes I'm only there for two two hours. Okay, so it's not standard practice for you to go out there and 
uh, download all the, the cameras like that just for one escort? No, no, because I, I wasn't getting paid to be at the office. I basically just did it because I was there for Miller. There's the only job I had. So I honestly went there every day. I had nothing to do at home. I, I have a dog business, but I have nothing to do at home. So I go to the office just to hang out. Right. Um, and just you know, just to chill. I, sometimes I brought my Xbox there. I played my games there. Um, so And he wasn't paying me for that. He paid two other guys $100 a week. But he told me he couldn't pay me because he's already paying these guys. And and basically the, the, Ken, the Ken DeLine guy, the captain, he told me when I left the company, he said that you need to stop working for free because Jay is going to take advantage of you and use you for free. Because now he sees that you're working for free, he's going to use you all the time. Right. So and I, I won't even come to the office because I'm like, you know, I'm not getting paid for any of this. Right. Okay. So, with that said, <clears throat> how often did Jeremy ever call you in the middle of the night and say, I need you to come into the office and help me with the cameras or... Uh, get he ready. Called me a couple, yeah, he called me a couple of times. He called me the last weekend on the Saturday before I get before I think it was before an S, a charity event that we did. Um, and he said, well, he called Stephen first, and he said, he said, hey, we need you to come in and you know and clear out the body cameras. And then Stephen called me, and I went to the office. I got the first one there because I left my garage clicker in one of the cars. And I went to the computer, and I was going to start doing it. And that's when Stephen Legrand called me, and he told me, he said, listen, don't touch anything. He said, don't do anything because, you know, I, I, I feel I feel like, you know, that somebody's watching or the sheriff's always watching. I don't want you touching anything. And I was like, are you sure? He was like, well, Jay told me originally for me to do it, so I'm going to do it. And I didn't, I was going to, I told him, I said, are you sure? I said, because I know a lot more computers than you. I said, I will do it. And he said, no, don't worry, I'll do it. And I was on FaceTime with him the whole night. And when he was, when I finally got home, I asked him, I said, what are you doing? He's like, I'm trying to do it. And I said, okay, turn the camera and face over the screen. And it shows that it was deleting something. But the thing is, he was only deleting a folder. And it supposedly took, this supposedly said that the folder was taking 16 hours to delete. And then he was like, why is it taking so long? I said, listen, I said, you must be doing something wrong. I said, because if you're deleting a folder, the computer is supposed to know that as soon as you delete something, it deletes really quick. No matter how much stuff is in it, it's going to go to the recycling bin. And then after you go to the recycling bin, that's when it'll take forever. Um, so I told him, I said, listen, just cancel. I said, I was saying 16 hours. I said, that's not right. Um, so while the whole process, maybe some items could have been deleted, and he canceled it, and then we were on FaceTime the whole night, and he left. Okay, so has Jeremy ever called him and told him to go delete anything or yeah, to upload uh, upload camera footage or anything? Yeah, because like I said, he's, he gets paid for that stuff, so most times he would upload stuff and he would call me and be like, hey, how do I access these files? How do you plug it in? Cause he wouldn't know either. Um, but I know he would call him sometimes and say, hey, can you come in? And um, do Hey, listen and to me. Victor, Victor, huh? listen yeah. to me. I know, I know Steven's your friend, but don't, uh -huh. don't sit here and try to help cover up something or help him out. You need to be completely okay. honest because I already know when yeah. I'm asking these questions, okay? Uh -huh. So don't sit here and try to tell me that he does it on a normal basis and then has to call you to get you to walk him through it. Be honest with me. He doesn't know how to do it, and he doesn't normally do it, correct? Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't normally do it, but I do it most, mostly. Okay. All the time. So, basically, uh, he didn't even know how to get in the building, correct? Uh, he didn't know how to get in the building, and then that's when he called um, Joe Mantaranga and asked him for the code, because honestly, I didn't remember the code. Um, and Joe Mantaranga gave him the code and told him, here's the code for the building. And then I told him, I said, well, if the keys are on the lockbox, then, you know, you can either go into the bay. Um, and then he actually got us. Uh, who's Joe? Uh, Joe, the big chubby guy you guys were working with? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, he didn't he didn't know actually how to stutter. So yeah, that's his name. Um so he didn't actually know how to get into the building. That's why he called Joe to ask for the pass to ask for the password for the lockbox, um, because we put keys inside of there for the office. Correct. So and and you frequent the office, that's why you knew how to get in, correct? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. And so <clears throat> uh you were you were monitoring the cameras. Have you ever downloaded anything or uploaded anything to your personal computer at home? From the from the security camera. Yes. 
from the security cameras, there's there's a way that you can access the camera from home and watch it. Um, but I've never accessed it from home. I have it on my phone on an app. Um, and ever since we got the, when we had the old office, I had everything through an app. So I watched everything through the app. But when the new office, when we finally got everything up, I had the app, and it was me and Jeremy that had access to the app. But I never, because if you look at the app, you can download videos, but the file's too big to download. So if you download a video and it downloads, depending on your service, it would only download about five seconds of the video. Okay. So so only you and Jeremy had access to that? That I'm, that I'm aware of, yeah. Okay. It was, it, was, it was the same username and password as the, as the old username. Right. But the thing is, like I said, when you have the old camera systems on there and you delete that, the, the app is only recognizing that password and, and that user ID for the old camera. So you have to well, you have to go to the admin account and scan the barcode in the back of the camera to give access to that new phone. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna. For I'm gonna. Body, also for, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Also for the body cameras, back when I you know I used to work, I would upload it onto my computer and put it onto a flash drive. Um, because he wanted me, because I, obviously I have a computer person. Um, I would upload it on my computer, put everything into a flash drive, and give it to him. Like, hey, listen, this is, a, this is a 120 gigabyte flash drive, or this is my, my external hard drive, and I would give it to him. Like, listen, this is everything, here it is. What would he do with it? Keep it and give it to his attorney, or, or keep it just for, for safekeeping. Um, because, like, the whole incident with um, the recent escrow we did, um, he's like, listen, I want you to upload that put that in a flash drive so I can give it to my attorney and I bought with my own money I bought five flash drives and uh, and I got a receipt for it he gave me the money back and then I basically put all the stuff with that happened with the escort that day with the deputy um, anything with Builder being at the office um, and he told me to put everything on some flash drive and give it to him and give one to my attorney and one to Steven's attorney and then the other ones he, he took two other ones and basically I don't know what he did with them I don't know if he gave them to someone else but he kept them at his house do you still have a copy of those? Um, my attorney has one copy. Okay. Yeah. But you didn't keep a copy? No, I didn't keep a copy. Uh, is is there a copy on his computer? Um, on Jay's computer? I know on the on the computer you guys took, yeah, he, there's one there. There's a folder named Biddler. Uh, there's a folder named Off-Duty Deputy. Then there's, a, then there's a, a folder named Windermere. Um, so they're all on the right-hand side of the screen that I put it on the right-hand side to keep it away from all his other personal documents. Okay. All right, and we'll get into that in a second. So, all right, let's see. Um, here, I'm going to go off that topic of the computer stuff for a second. Uh -huh. uh, so, well, let me back up. So, you said that the one night that he called you, that was the night he was in jail, correct? Uh, uh, yeah, he was in jail because he called Stephen Agron from, from the, I think it was that, that night. Was it that night? It was, um, and I'm going to tell you how yeah. I know because I'm, I'm going to share stuff with you. And uh, so we know because we pulled the phone call records from the jail. So that's how that's how I know that you, the two of you, were sent over there to delete files. Yeah. And it, you weren't you weren't sent. Did you believe you were sent over there just to uh, prepare for the next day, or did you believe you were being sent over there to maybe destroy? I, I already knew. I already knew because sorry to cut you off. I apologize. I, but I. You know, when, when, Jay, when Jay said to Steven, and Steven told me, when he said that we need you to clear stuff for the next day, I already knew what it was. Obviously, if he's in jail, he wants us to clear the storage from the from everything because he knew the sheriff's office was going to come to the office sooner or later. So huh? I already... I, it, huh? How did he know that? Um, well, I, well, I knew because obviously if he was in jail, then most of the time they would be coming to the office sooner or later. Right. Okay, so so that night, that was not a normal thing for him to call you and tell you to do that. It wasn't a norm, wasn't a normal thing because most most of the times, if you look at my call records, he's called me. Oh, sorry, I just got checked battery light. Um, he called he called me in the middle of the night before, um, and asked me, "Oh, can you go to the office? Um, you know, check on the car to do something." But it's it was really rare that night that he called us from the jail and and remembered his number, but they didn't call me. Meanwhile, I'm the IT person, or called me, but he called him to go to the office. And that's when he was, and that's when I was like, oh, well, I forgot my garage clicker. I'm heading back to the office anyway. Okay. All right. Uh, have you and Steven talked about this? And be honest with me, don't lie to me. Have you and Steven been talking about this? About what? Coming, uh, coming and talking to the sheriff's office. Oh, 
Yeah, uh, yeah, very a lot, a long time. Because obviously we we known each other well, twenty three. I would say twenty two years um, since yeah. birth. Um, we've been childhood friends since my mom and her his mom went to high school together. So everywhere he's been at in a job, I've been in a job with him. Okay, um, so always, uh, yeah. what what have you two been talking about? Um, well, we were first talking about that we were really nervous um, because we thought that we would go, you know, we would say something that that Jay was doing or we were doing that that we were doing that we didn't know it was illegal or illegal illegal or illegal. Um, so we were scared to come in that we thought we were going to jail. Okay, so do do you think? As many contacts as we have had, whether it be Sergeant Vidler or myself or other Orange County deputies, and we have told you that what you do is not legal, do you think that we have told you and your fellow uh, employees on more than one occasion that it is understandable that what you're doing is illegal? Yeah, so we knew, well, yeah, because like I said, we, we knew it was illegal, but the thing is, we were following what he said because he's totally had court documents saying, stating that. You know, it was okay to run sirens. He said that a judge said it was okay to run opposite sides of traffic, opposite sides of traffic. That the lane over, it was okay to run sirens. Um, you know, the judge said that it was okay to have these lights. It was okay to to speed. It was okay to do to break into traffic lights at a red light, at a green light. So I thought it was okay. And like I told Biller when I when I got detained um, that day at the park, I said, listen, I I know a lot of deputies, and, and it's crazy. Most of the deputies that I know and, and lieutenants, that they have told me about this company, and they told me to leave. They said, listen, it's not a good job. You need to leave this job. And obviously, I didn't listen because it's the only job I can get at the time. And it, and it, and it paid my bills really quick. Um, so a lot of the higher-ups, and I'm not going to use this as some type of personal thing, but a lot of the higher-ups told me to quit the job a long time ago. And, and I didn't listen because... When you say higher-up, when you say higher-up, who? Um... Well, when I went to um, the Norman Lewis thing, we had a Norman Lewis for the, the motor deputy at, my, at our neighborhood and um, in Barton Park in O'Cheney. Um, I forget. So one of the captains, one of the captains now in the sheriff's office, I forget his name. Um, but he was there. A couple motor deputies were there. Um, big husky white guy, tall guy. He was there. Um, and I told him I worked for Metro, and they were like, "Yeah, you should really leave that company." I was there with my my parents in the neighborhood party, and all these deputies were telling me, and even John Mina. Um, when he was an OPD, when he was an OPD chief, he told me he's like, listen, he was like, I don't know you, but personally, you should leave this job. Uh, 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 deputy or is it chief? Uh, chief of Berlin, even he told me. Um, I told I told Billis first day, man, I'm a, I do law enforcement photography. That's all I focus on photography. So most most pictures on my page are with deputies. I take pictures with them, and when they find out I work for Metro, they're like. No, you should not be working there. They said if you if you have a path and you want to be a law enforcement officer one day, they said this is going to look bad on your record. Okay, so, so um, you obviously know Sheriff Mina because you felt comfortable enough to approach him in the parking lot and talk to him. Tell me about that. Yeah, that is. I Jay Jay told me to go to Internal Affairs and fight my ticket because he 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 said he thought it was harassment because the fact that it was a traffic citation and they mentioned. The, the whole case. So he said, he was like, if I was you, go to internal affairs, okay. um, the, the, the deputy that sent me over, the, the deputy Draco, or the, yeah. yeah. Um, so he told me, he was like, if I was you, go to internal affairs, make a complaint, and, and figure out what to do or contest it. I saw Mina, and I was like, oh, hey. I was, and he was like, hey, I was like, you remember me, right? He was like, yeah, you're the photographer guy. I was like, yeah. He was like, you got tickets? And I was like, yeah, because the whole Metro State stuff. And he was like, oh. And I was like, yeah, I was like, you know what it is. And then he got inside his car and then he was on walking over to the internal affairs office. And did he tell you anything? No, he didn't. He just, he said that, he, he, mumbled, well, he mumbled on his words. He was like, you know, something, I feel, I feel bad or I feel sorry, something like that, he said. But it seemed like he was in a rush. My point was, mainly, I wasn't going to, like, mention it to him. I was, that's why I was like, hey, you remember me? Because every time I see him, even at, at the parade, I always walk up to him and I always say hi to him. I always ask him for an updated picture that we can take a selfie together. Um, so, you know, and even Jeremy told us that, you know, the Mike guy, he's friends with Sheriff Mina. Sheriff Mina told he spoke with Jeremy and spoke with Mike about this whole thing um, and told the Mike guy that if Mike was going to represent Jeremy, that, that if, that, that Mina was going to be mad with Mike if, if Mike, if Mike took Jeremy as a, a under, under the wing. 
and, and, and was trying to protect them. So I didn't, you know, I didn't really say nothing to Amina that day about Metro. I said, I got these tickets because of Metro. So wait, so who, who, he said that Sheriff Mina told Mike that if he took Jeremy under his wing and tried to protect him, he was going to be mad at him? Yeah, that's what Jeremy said. That's the day at the office. We were at the office. Because he, he called me. He was like, oh, guess what? Like, what happened? Because I spoke to Mike. Mike spoke to Sheriff Mina. Um, they have a meeting soon. They met up for breakfast. Um, and, and, and Mina said to Mike that if, if Mike covers, if Mike helps out Jeremy, that Mina was going to be kind of mad because, you know, Mike and him are, are really good friends. So he said either Mike said, Sheriff Mina said to Mike, that are you going to take it as a personal level or are you going to defend this guy? And then if you do defend this guy, then, you know, I'm going to be kind of mad. Gotcha. Okay. So, do you know if uh, Mike ever talked to Sheriff Mina again? Uh, not that I know. I know Jeremy did tell me that he had everything on recording. But every time I asked him, I was like, oh, can I? Because, uh, you know, I, obviously I, I, didn't, I didn't trust him when, when everything started going down. And I asked him, I said, can I hear this recording? And he's like, yeah, 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 show me. Get to the office. And I would I remind him. And he's like, oh, I got to go. I got to go. But I would have a feeling that he does record conversations about all this, but I've actually never heard anything, no physical documents stating that this is going on. Okay. It was always, it was always word of mouth from him. So you don't know about any conversation where, uh, where Mike tells Jeremy that that uh, we're told to leave him alone and that the sheriff's office is not going to pursue him? Yeah, Mike, Mike said something like that a while ago that he said that, listen, you just need a... He, well, he was telling Jeremy and, and telling and he said that Mike said to tell all employees to remain calm. He said everything that's going on, that it, 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 there's nothing for you. He said just remain calm. Um, and that's when Jeremy said, listen, just make internal affairs requests, speak to an agent. And, and file internal affairs against Fiddler. Okay, so when you went to uh, internal affairs, what happened? Um, I called over the phone, and I I called them, and I spoke to them. I said, listen, my name is Fiddler Lopez. I work for Metro State. Um, you know, Jeremy, I didn't mention his name, but I said, I want to file a request against Fiddler, a, a complaint. They said, what's the complaint? I said, well, there was an incident. I was city deputy. Um, I feel like I was targeted. Um, they said, well, we can't file the report because you might have pending charges against you. And I say to them, I said, listen, I said, I have the right to make a report even though if I have pending charges or not. And he's like, that's not right. And then he was like, well, I'll let someone know and, and, and we'll call you back. So he hangs up the phone, never called me back. Um, I told Jeremy that day, I called him and I was like, listen, I was like, they're telling me they can't take the request because I have, supposedly I have pending charges against me. And he was like, well, that's not true. He's like, you need to call them back and speak to someone in charge because they have to file your report no matter what. How would Jeremy know that you don't have charges? Um, I don't know that well. I, well, I, well, I, well, I told folks, well, well, when, when Villa called me that day, um, the first time I was driving, and I told Villa, that's when I was like, oh, what happens if I don't be part of it? He's like, well, just let you know, we have charges against you. And I thought, I thought, I told Billy, I was like, well, listen, I was like, let me decide. And that day I was actually going to work that day. And I told Jeremy, I was like, well, listen, Billy just called me uh, stating that if I don't go in and talk, uh, he wants to become a witness or, or defendant. If I don't go in and talk, they're going to have charges against me. He's like, oh, that's all BS because um, if they would have had charges, they would have came and got you the same day as me. Let me just clarify something, John. The day in question of uh, the phone call would have been on or, on or about uh, September 16th, correct? Shortly, shortly after the blue jacket. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just well. clarify for data yeah. for, for record. I think I have a voicemail. Okay. Uh, Ramsey called me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Um, uh, John, I got a question. Let me ask you a question. What What did Jeremy accomplish by filing all these uh, professional standards complaints? <laughs> he said um, he said that he's going to file a civil lawsuit against the sheriff's office. Um, and he said that supposedly they give you some type of letter, the sheriff's office saying that we apologize. And he said that he was going to go to Tallahassee and have this letter sent out to all the departments. He'd be like, listen, if you come after me, we're going to sue all you guys. Um, even though if you got a dollar, they're going to hang the dollar up on the thing, really funny, but he's going to hang it up on the poster and send it to every department. And listen, if you mess with me and our company, we're going to come after you guys with civil lawsuits. Um, <clears throat> as far as, as, as that goes, um, let me, uh, uh -huh. John, I, I don't mean to interrupt you. I just want to clarify a couple things that was said. As far as the lawsuit, um, are you aware of the documentation that show 
he, he keeps telling you guys and other people that he's a, a state certified agent. Never show, he never showed me that. Who, who's certified? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. I, he always told me by the word of mouth that he's a state certified agency. Okay. But he never showed us documentation. I always look at Sunbiz and it's LLC. And, um, and that Sunbiz was created in February. Yeah, I think so. And it's under his. It's under someone else's name on the different address of their post. I think that's his mom's address. Um, that, yeah, that's 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 something that he's not even at. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so uh, as far as any certifications of actually being a real company, um, no. like like for example, I'm going to give you an example. If you go into any business anywhere in Orange County, any business, if they're a legitimate business, they'll have posted on their wall. Uh, occupational uh, yeah. uh, picture of him and everything. Yeah. Well, anything to do with their company, showing that it's a legitimate company. Is any of that ever posted? No. Have you ever Not seen anything posted? Everything in his office is all his memorabilia. Um, okay. I've always asked him, you know, do you have proof saying that everything we're doing is legal? Oh, well, I have some from the judges. But when we actually see it, obviously he says, oh, well, we'll get back to the office. Oh, oh we'll get Let to the office. Let me clarify something uh -huh. that we said to Jeremy for you, because he uses those same lines to us all the time yeah. to everybody. Um, as a former narcotics agent, um, and I use this analogy all the time, um, we'll put charges on somebody, we'll arrest them, and then for whatever reason, the case gets dismissed, okay? That doesn't mean the judge is telling that drug dealer, whatever, that yeah. you can now sell drugs because I've dismissed your case. And I think that's the biggest miss, uh, the confusion that Jeremy is having, that when a ticket is beat in court or a ticket is dismissed in court, um, he's assuming that that's the judge or the hearing officer telling him that it's okay to do what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. told me that the other day. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so I just want to put that on record, that you, you know, yeah. when he tells you guys that stuff, that's the reason. Yeah, that's what I believe, that, you know, I've gotten over 100 on tickets and everything gets to the mess. He's right. like, everything, everything the sheriff's office is, is giving me tickets for, it's all BS. He's like, they're just messing with me. But you, you've never seen any documentation uh, whatsoever as far as a business license, uh, any, uh, I've seen the ambulance stuff, that's it. The ambulance, the ambulance stuff, I've seen that, um, only the, uh, I've seen lease agreement when we had the new office on Lee Road. I've seen right. that, but I've never seen actual documentation stating that the business is, is legal and legal to do these things. Do you have access to his computer and, like, email? Um, I have access to his computers and his emails only on, on, on the, obviously, when you go to the computer, you log in, his email's already logged oh, in. Oh, his email, okay. Yeah, so have out. you yeah. seen any, any, any bills or anything from an insurance company? Everything, yeah. yeah. Everything, okay. Yeah. So, as far as, uh, have you any, do you know if he has even any liability certificates, any um, insurance? I know he told us we had, well, you know, we would make jokes, do we have benefits of the job? No. Do we have workers' comp? No. Yeah, every time we would make a joke, we're like, oh, we're going to sue you, you know, because I, you know, you start laughing, and you go, oh, well, you can't sue me. And I'm like, okay. Um, but I've never seen any documents. I know we signed, we signed documents for like the 1099, W-4s, you know, all that. Um, and he had a sign, but honestly, like when we signed the um, inventory share of what we have, I'll sign it. I never gave it to him. But I said, I'm not okay, did he ever, so the four years you're working for him, has he ever given you a 1099 form for taxes? I know he gave me some form that asked for my social security number and all that. But, but what I'm saying is at the end of your, like, for example, I'll, I'll give you an uh -huh. example. Before our off duty checks went through the sheriff's office and we worked off duty for Universal yeah. or, or House of Blues or whatever, um, we were a 1099 employee. Oh, okay. All right. So at the end of the year, I would receive a 1099 form oh, no, from the House of Blues no. saying that you worked and we paid you this amount that you have to claim on your yeah. taxes. Uh, have you ever given me mm -hmm. one no. in the four years? Mm -hmm. okay. I never got any of those in the mail. Uh, okay. Um, now, as you're, we were talking about workers' comp now. Um, has any employee ever been hurt on the job and he told them that, that uh, they're on their own? A lot of times. A lot of times. Yeah. Like, um, um, one guy named Groove, I don't know his real name, but Groover they call him. Um, actually, no, um, his name is Ha, something Ha. Um, but he got hit one time on 436 over the overpass, um, and a car hit him, and the, the driver of the car fled, and I guess one of the, one of the officers, I don't remember, it was, year, it was maybe a Two and, a half, two and a half years ago, one of the officers chased them, but after he got, he went into the field. They called PD. Um, he went to the hospital. His bill was almost like ten grand. And Jay was like, and he was hurt everywhere. He was on the floor bleeding. Um, EMS picked him up. The bill was ten grand. Jay said, "I'm not paying for it." The Gruber kept his 
Women's uniform, and then I'm returning. Um, because I'm not getting this, so I get my last paycheck, or you pay my bill. Who knows? And supposedly Jay told us that later on he would pay for the bill, supposedly, but I've never seen proof of it. But I know a lot of the motor officers, they have got hit, and they don't pay. Unless, like I said, unless it's, it's Ken, it's Andrew, it's Alan, or it's, um, back then it was a strike. It was those four guys, it was the main guys, the company over, he would cover the bills like nothing. But I've never got hit. I've never, yeah. Um, you're like, go ahead, John. All right, hey, uh, Victor. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> have you ever met Mike? Um, he Bill is showing a picture, and now that I know with him, I always heard of him. Um, and now that the guy, the guy does look familiar. We met him at the grand opening when, when at the old office on um, OBT and Shader when we had all the ambulance there. I actually met him one time, but I didn't know who he was. Uh, Jay just said that this is the guy that's helping us with the ambulance business. And he also mentioned Dr. Rivera, and he works for, um, I forget what company it is, um, but he mentioned, he mentioned Dr. Rivera and Mike. These are the two guys that are helping us open up this business. Um, but that was, what, two and a half years ago, two years ago? And that's when Bill showed me the picture today. I was like, oh, that's the guy from the grand opening. But I never knew knew who he was. And I looked online, Mike, um, Mike attorney, Mike lawyer, but I could never find anything about who this Mike guy was So until today. Right. I don't know who he is. But I met him that day at the grand opening. Did uh, have you ever seen where Jeremy makes uh, any kind of payments to him or anybody else? Um, I only seen payments to Dr. Rivera where um, where Dr. Rivera acts to have license sold in his vehicle, and Dr. Rivera pays Jeremy in a check to put lights in his car. Um, but anything towards the ambulance, I've never seen payment given. I've seen I've seen um, receipts of you know, him making payments to the insurance company is like, what, $17,000 a month just to have insurance for ambulances? Hey, John, just for the record, I'm going to show him a picture so he can confirm that we're talking about the same person. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's him right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah we met him at um at the charity event. He drives he drives one of the, the, motor, the motorcycle trucks. Okay, the light. Hey, John, just for the record, I showed him a picture of Michael Green's law firm and where there's pictures of Michael Green. Um standing in a suit coat and then he's standing in front of a it looks like an f-250 with lights on correct and <clears throat> just so you know victor i do have a picture uh, of you standing with him as well did you do you oh, do you recall ever taking a picture with him well like i said not not that i that i knew his name but or, or no like i obviously i knew his name but i never that was what like maybe two and a half years ago two years ago a year and a half but I knew who Mike was, but I never remembered what he looked like. Okay. I mean, I'm, and I'm being and I'm being completely honest. All right, I believe you. All right, and so who? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna just ask a couple questions so you can get your uh, uh, thinking. Um, I'm gonna go off the subject a little bit, dealing with the uh -huh. security side of, of um, Metro State um, in health. In house security, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we've done a couple, a lot of things. Like okay. So as far as, as the the security side of Metro State, um, obviously, um, uh, we know that Jeremy has been hired by Wall Street and Home and in different places now to perform security services. Uh, are you aware that uh, Jeremy Dewitt is not a security company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know, I know that. Actually, I, I looked at his um B and G for the company, and everything's expired or under review. Um, well, well, he's a convicted felon. So yeah, he can't. He can't, yeah. he can't. Right, right. He can't get one. Um, with that said, uh, how many times have you? Again, this is just being honest. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not. I can't go back. Yeah, I know. Uh, how many times have you performed security services for at um, many of these places? A, a lot. A lot. I would say a lot of times since I've been with the company. Um, but you know. I obviously I I've worked in health security before for a hotel and I was contracted with a hotel and I know the difference between being contracted and not being contracted. So obviously if I'm contracted, like I was I worked at the hotel, I filled out a ten ninety nine and I filled out all that. With Jeremy I with Jeremy I didn't. So when I asked him I said when we worked when we used to work at Woodlawn, like maybe like a year and a half to two years, um, I was like, well, okay, what am I doing, Cam? He's like, oh, if you're going to ask questions, I'm not going to have you work. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, listen, dog, just stay in the car, drive around. If you see someone, walk up to them, ask them what they're doing here. And I'm like, yeah, but it's a cemetery. Anyone's allowed to come. He's like, yeah, but if they look very out of place, ask them. 
and if they if they say we're not here to see a loved one, ask them to leave. And if you have any problems, call the sheriff's office. Um, obviously, I drove around. I have my takedown lights. This was two years ago when I had the light bar charger a long time ago, our old one. And I drove around the cemetery. Uh, most, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Most time I, I napped a little tiny bit. Um, but it was, it was eight hours. And, you know, I drove around with my takedown lights. Um, my girl, that was on Halloween, and my girlfriend came to visit me. Um, she was in her costume, and she came, and, and we hanged out. We ate food. Um, but I've never, there was only one guy, and he was, he was smoking weed, and I didn't say nothing to him because he was a big huskier black guy. And I didn't say nothing to him. I stood in the car. I called Jay. I said, listen, Jay, I said, there's a guy here. Um, he's smoking weed. She was like, well, call the sheriff's office. I said, are you sure? I said, because I called the sheriff's office. Obviously, the sheriff's office is going to say, we're not security. What are we doing here? So I didn't call, and I, I kept on driving. Um, so, like I said, I've worked a lot of times for him doing this supposedly in-house security because he says it's not illegal because we're contracted by them. Um, and... I remember when he worked at Wall Street, he spoke to the owner of Wall Street. He's like, listen, we can't do security, but we can do in-house. And then the lady was like, oh, well, we can have you wear our T-shirts. And he's like, no, we can't do that. He said, we're a Be Life agency, so we have to wear our company shirts. He says, we're not putting on your Wall Street security shirts because we're not security. Um, and I always thought it was okay because OPD, OPD saw us there multiple times, patting people down, um, sometimes uh Jay and all the guys, they've got to fight with security, with, with the drunk people. Um, obviously, I'm not going to get to fight with nobody. I just stood there and patted people down. But I thought it was okay because PD saw me in a match the uniform with my duty belt, but everything I had on was less lethal. Like, I had my baton, I had handcuffs, I had a pepper spray gun at that time. It was a little, like a mace gun. I had an orange tip and a sprayed out mace. And OPD asked me, they said, what, what is this? And I said, it's a mace gun. And Jeremy walked up to me and said, what's the problem? I said, I said they're asking me what this is. And I, I, they, they pulled it out. They looked at it. And they was like, oh, my God, this is really a pepper, pepper spray gun. And they looked at it. And they said, okay, you're fine. And the rest of the night, we were okay. Did you have a tape rod, too? Uh, no. Okay. I didn't have a tape rod. Yeah, I, I merely had the, the pepper spray. It was a little orange device with a black handle. And, it, and you put a pepper spray oh, can oh, in it. like the, the, the day that the blue jacket when I... When yeah, I, like that. Which like, this one was different. This one was... Okay. A little more or less lethal. Now, in your uniform, you said, was it the Metro State? What color shirt was it? This one, back then when I was working the Wall Street, I had the gray shirt. I had my uh, navy blue BDU, my honor boots, and then my uh, my duty belt. And your gray shirt had a, a uh, green printed badge? Yes, yeah, green printed badge. And um, then Metro State. Yeah. Well, back then, we had uh, just uh, the screen printed badge and, then, and motor unit. And then that's when he got a Metro State protection officer. Protection officer. Um, and why did you mention that word? Uh, uh, Protection. I know a lot of your uniform state protection. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the day that I public safety officer, public safety yeah. officer, um, I was aware that yeah. you know, it was okay to wear. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, and when, when the word protection, what what is the synonym synonym of protection? <laughs> In other words, what is another word for protection? Um, it's security. Yeah, it, well, like that. Yeah, because I, I see a lot of security agencies, public safety officer, a lot of security companies have public safety officer yeah. or protection protection officer or protection guard. Protection guard, anything so, to do with protection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so so he's been doing this for several years. I know at Woodlawn Cemetery over in, in uh, Agosa or, or, or Ocoli area. Um, have you ever done any search? I've only did um, Woodlawn, which like I said was last a couple of Halloweens ago. I right. my girlfriend. Um, I've done the mosses before. I'm sitting in front of the mosque, sitting in the car, not making contact with anyone. Um, and like I said, always be aware of that parking. Um, I he said, what? Parking, their parking detail. So he said, if Orange County comes or anything, it's parking. We're there in the parking lot. We're, we're on private property. Yeah. So they can't say anything because we're so private. So when he says it's a parking lot detail, that's basically in case law enforcement comes. In case law enforcement comes. Let me yeah. ask you this. At any time when he did those type of security details, did you park the car? <laughs> no, no, I did not. No, and why? I, 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 yeah, I, yeah. I helped with other. If I got the mop, we did the parking details. Um, well, even though it's not, I'll stay in the car. Um, and he's like, and even the mom people, they asked me, so what do you carry? I'm like, yeah. uh, it's a pepper ball gun. And he's like, does it shoot bullets? And I'm like, no, it's not. And they're like, oh, well, we're gonna have to contact Jay because we were aware that you guys had guns. They want a gun. Um, so and my cousin even told me, he says something happened. You need to drive off. Yeah. He said, because you're if they start shooting, you. you're going to be dead. Um, so a lot of the mosses, they knew, they thought that we had done. Okay. Um, and I, I always told them that it was a pepper like ball. Even like the day we did um, the charity event for the airport with uh, the guys from Benghazi. Um, we did those, and uh, the, 
guy, one of the Benghazi guys, was like, oh, is that a gun? And I was like, no, it's a purple one. And he was like, no, 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 he's, like, he's the kid. It's, it's a gun on him. And I was like, no. I was like, I was like this guy knows what a gun is. Yeah, he, yeah, he knows what guns are. Yeah, he knows. Uh, oh. Wow. Um, all right, so then um, uh, I guess this year, um, go to Chapel Hill uh-huh. Cemetery. Uh, back in July, they hired Metro State to, to do it. Yeah, the chapel um, um, uh, over on the east side, uh, in her home, uh, Chapel Hill Cemetery. Yeah, yeah. Um, they hired back in July Metro State to do a protection <coughs> search for a funeral with a girl named. Um, anyway, she, she was involved. She was shot and let low, and they were expecting a lot of trouble. Yeah. Were you on that security detail? No, I did one in. Um, in which which one? Shell and. Uh, back out the light. Definitely on the back. There was one out of Baldwin one a while ago. And um, what I heard, in Osmond, the one where, where the where the PD is, like in a, in a little neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did one there where the uncle was supposed to had a gun and was supposed to be going to come over. And Jay had me sit at the at the actual house. And I was in Durango back then. And I sat in the house and I sat there. Um, and I was the only unit working that day. And the family ended up coming to the house that day, and, and I, honestly, I was asleep because she told me I fell asleep. Um, and I still I still keep in contact with her through the name Caitlin something. Um, I don't have her on Facebook, but she told me that the uncle did come to the cemetery, the cemetery, but you weren't there. Um, so, and he worded that as a as a high risk protection funeral. Oh wow! So, and back then I had the orange pepper spray gun um, and a duty belt. And also, obviously, a great shirt. I sat in the car in front of the driveway. Okay. Um, let's move forward uh-huh. to uh, this past Halloween, yeah. you know, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, I know when I went out there on uh, November 1st, um, I saw you in the uh, episode. Yeah. yeah. You were patrolling the grave sites with the lights on and everything. Um, who, who sent you out there? Uh, Jeremy texted me, or I think he, call, he called me and said, either you work it or Andrew work it. Um, Andrew Ross. And I was like, well, I'll work it. I was like, I'm not doing anything that night. Um, I said, what do you want me to wear? He said, wear anything you want. So I wore my shorts, obviously, my, my Under Armour shirt, my Nike hat, and I didn't bring no deep off because I knew what was going on. Um, and he aware of me that was a parking detail. So obviously when I first got there, when, just to clarify, uh-huh. when he says it's a parking detail, what's he actually referring to? He said that he basically wanted us to drive around and make sure kids weren't damaging the tombstones because it's Halloween. Right. And why did he tell you it's a parking detail? Um, God was just security. He just he's not going to tell us that. Right, but he tells you it's a parking detail for what reason? Oh, so for the obviously the sheriff's office. Sheriff's office comes and, you know, you tell them it's parking. But obviously okay. the sheriff's office right. the sheriff's office's not dumb. They, they know. Um, so I said, I got there. Um, I made contact with a guy named Trevor, and I told him, I said, listen, I said, Connie, Connie said we're here, and he was like, well, Connie's on vacation, and I was like, and, and he was like, I wasn't aware, and I said, well, this is what my boss is, Jeremy, telling me, he's telling me that Connie said we're here, and he's like, well, what are you here for? I said, basically, um, what my boss is saying, we're here to make sure that the kids are not damaging the tombstone, because it's the day of the living, the day of the living dead, some event, um, and basically, I'm going to either be sitting here, or I'm going to drive around with my takedown lights. Um, and obviously, you know, I, I turned on my, uh, my traffic advisory some, sometimes, turned on my lights, but he said, he said, if you feel like you're, there's someone there, because the spotlight didn't work on the car, the only takedown that worked was the front one, the side one didn't work. Um, so he said, if you see someone, flip your lights on and flip them off. Just, just see, so if you're aware of the presence, they're aware of some type of presence there. Um, so I drove around for a little bit. Um, I went to a building, sat there for a little bit. I was on FaceTime with my best friend from Texas. And I, I, I showed him where I was at. I even took a picture in, in the back of the tree. I slept there for maybe about 10 minutes. Um, drove around a little more. Um, then that's when I officially I sat at the front gate, second gate, back then, and watched my Netflix. And I went to Wawa, got to eat, got to get some food. And I sat there maybe about three hours. And I slipped on my rear lights every time I saw um, anything, anybody from the funeral, just so they knew I wasn't sleeping. So I would flip it on just to let them know, hey, I'm still awake. And confirming your hours that they were um, 7 o'clock in the evening to 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I, I left a little bit earlier. Okay. Yeah. All right. And who paid you for that? Um, I never got paid for that at all. Cause Jeremy said he never got paid yet. He said he never got the check. Um, and then okay. And then I got paid. I, got paid. I showed you the check. That no, yeah, no, obviously I got paid. Well, oh, was, I got paid like three weeks later oh, because okay, okay. everything that was going on, he fully said he was a negative $3,000 in his bank account. So okay. he had no money to pay him, but which we never, we, 
to the end of the day, I got, I was supposed to get paid six hundred dollars in total. I only got paid half of that, and half of that's like what three hundred. But he told me, he said, no, I can only give you two seventy. And I was like, yeah, that's not half though. And he's like, well, this is all I can afford. And he said, well, and he paid me on Saturday. He said, listen, don't cash your check until Monday or Tuesday. I was like, well, why not? He's like, well, because I don't know if I'm going to have enough money by then. Um, so obviously, I cashed it on Monday. I texted him. I said, do you have money in your account? He's like, I just deposited the check. But don't cash. I cashed it anywhere. I said, yeah, you can't tell me I can't cash my check. Um, so you know, he still owes me money to this day, and half that money is from from that detail. Wow. Sorry about that. Yeah. So what you were saying? Uh, uh, no, no. Check? Oh yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Basically, so you didn't get paid from Jeremy for that. Debt. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I didn't and, get paid. Yeah. And you were directed to you were directed to go out there by Jeremy by and to work for Metro State. Yeah. The Metro State. And, and, and he said that Connie had it in text between him. Yeah. Yeah. That, and, but okay. I asked him for proof and not being on them. Yet. Okay. Right. Yeah. So. All right, John. Go ahead. So Victor, you knew that you were going out there to perform security duties, correct? Um. Well, to my knowledge, yes. He told me it was for parking, but obviously I knew what it really was. That's code word for him yeah. if you get stopped yeah, by law enforcement. Word, yeah, for, yeah for, for security. Yeah, I knew that. Okay. Um, so, like I said, like I told you, obviously I know the difference being contract and, and 1099. Obviously, we're not 1099. Um, so, that's why he paid me through check, like he always does company check. Right. Um, and so that's payroll to him. Because um, every time I go to Amscot, they're like, oh, it's a payroll check. And I'm like, no, it's a company check. It's through Wells Fargo. Um, and they're like, oh, well, what are you receiving this check for? And I called Jay when they said, listen, I said, they asked me, what am I getting a check? He's like, well, just put on the memo, either you're washing cars or you're setting up cameras for me. So that no questions will be asked. Why are you getting a check and you're not, and you're not filing taxes? Okay. Uh, how many escorts do you do on average a week? Uh, average a week? Uh, to be honest, sometimes it, it, it ranges, but like the last, the last, well, I have it on my phone. Um, the last Saturday, I did one escort. That's when we got back to Orange County. And that day, I was nervous. I didn't want to do any more. Um, the last week before that, I did a Saturday. And the last week before that, I did $300 in escorts. So that was about seven to eight escorts. Okay. Hey, hey, John, I'm going to walk out. i got to use the restroom real quick. Okay. I'll be right home. Um, so I did about about seven to eight escorts on a day. I should know on a day on a week. So that equals about, about $300. Um, and then the last three, the last three days before that Saturday, I did them for free because I told them, I said, listen, I said, I'm not going to charge you uh, 50, I'm not going to charge you hundred dollars. I said, because I feel bad for you. What's going on? And he was like, oh, thank you. If you need anything, you know, let me know. And when I do get money, I'll pay you back. I said, no, no, no. I said, it's okay. I said, you're dealing with a lot. I said, don't pay me. It's okay. Don't pay me for those three escorts. Okay. And now let's talk about your uniforms. You've been with uh -huh. him for about four years, you said, off and on. Yeah. Okay. Why? I already know the answer to this, and I, uh -huh. I know you do. Why do you wear the uniforms that you wear? Because he asked, he wants us to be like police officers. He wants us to gain the respect and and to look like law enforcement, so people can treat us the same as them. So if we go into an intersection, and he tells us to, because like when we when he tells us to stop shopping, he would tell us to get out of our vehicle and raise both of our hands up. So he's like, when we do that, he's like, if we're in uniform. He said they're going to think we're cops. Most people are going to think we're cops. Some people know we're not. Obviously, we're not cops. Um, so that's what it is. And like when, I, when he gave me a vest and I wore a vest, he said, you can't wear a vest with a, with, a, with, a, with a duty belt on your side. I said, why not? He said, do you see the sheriff's office wearing a, 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 um, a, a, a vest with a duty belt on the side? I said, yeah, sometimes I do. He goes, okay, well, that's, that's the low life. He said, well, you actually look, if you look at TAC, you know, they wear the gun holster on the side of their leg. And I was like, okay. And he gave me a gun. He gave me a gun holster for my side leg. and said, "This is how you're supposed to wear it." He said, "If you're gonna wear a vest, you need to wear a gun holster on your side." And I was like, "Okay." Um, and then even when I wore shorts, he said, "I wore my gun holster on my, on my leg." He said, "No, cops don't do that." He said, "If you wear if you wear shorts, you wear it on your side, and you do not wear your vest." Okay. So, who picks out the uniforms? Uh, Jay does, and he brings it to um to Design Lab um right on right there by the by the jail. Or he brings it to Gauls, um, right over there on Lake Underhill, and he brings the patches in, and, and they design the shirt. Um, and most of the time, the people that does that is uh, Randall Brochus. He he'll, he'll be the one to go to Gauls and order the T-shirt. Okay, and and Randall is the one we arrested with the uh, the right gun. Nineteen eleven. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here's the next thing. Uh, uh -huh. Well, let me ask you. 
you've seen the uniform, and you've uh -huh. been around law enforcement, correct? Yeah. Do you think that the uniform that you wear, like the dress, your your dress blues for like when you do military or law enforcement or firefighter, whatever escorts you do? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah do, military, we wear class A, and I'm not going to lie, yes, we do look like cops. And when I've been to the, the Deborah Clayton, a lot of cops are like, oh, what agency you're with? Yeah. They're like, what agency you're with? And I'm like, I'm with Metro State. And they're like, what's that? Oh, we're a funeral escort company. So, like the Greens Church, that's the 9 probation, um, Penn. Or I forget the real name. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is uh, I'm showing the class picture. B. That's um, Stephen. Stephen, that's the class B. That's a class B or class A? Class class A is the long sleeve. Class B is the short sleeve. Short sleeve. And yeah. what is this one? Um, gray shirt. He only the only him and Andrew has that. But that's the polo shirt. The I forget what material it is. Okay. But we get the the shitty ones, the ones that are adult. But he gets yeah. those those types because the they look more professional for him. Oh, I see. So, so yeah, there is a different. Yeah, because he shirt. has a okay. yours. Is, his is like yours. Your, that yeah, ours yeah. is kind of like like a cheap, like, like a cheap T-shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, like a cheap. Okay, I see. Yeah. All right. And I was there that day also. By the way, I saw the one took the picture. I think. I think. Uh, let me see that again. Um. No, you and Reem were missing in the picture. No, we. No, what? Uh, she. Uh, where was this? At? It looks like like Nelda. This is the Rock and Brew. It's the Rock and Brew picture before the motorcycle escort. Huh. No, no, I probably wasn't there. I don't know. I can't remember. That day. Yeah, if I, if I remember right, that you and Repo were the only two missing from the photo. Yeah. And I know, I know I sometimes when we have chat events, I bring my camera and I take pictures for him. I was thinking yeah. maybe am I the one that took the picture, but I can't remember. And then rock and group. Was that the one recently? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah just recently. With the, uh, yeah, the chat event, they went to Alfiola yeah. and all that. Yeah, I was, I was there. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, you were there and Repo was there. You all came late. You were on another escort and you came late, correct? Yeah, that, yeah, that's what it is. We came late, yeah. Um, no, actually, no. We had, um, I had U-Haul. Because at that time, I was, we were at the Lee Road office and I worked for U-Haul for him. And I stood at the office that day because there was a U-Haul coming. And, and Repo was just getting there in the tow truck. And he was like, oh, where's everybody else? They're a rocket group. He's like, are we meeting them there? I said, yeah. And I stood at the office for about an hour, and I called the U-Haul lady. I said, hey, where are you? Oh, we're going to be an hour late. Um, I called Jay. He said, listen, stay here for 31 minutes. If they don't get here, he said, haul out and get to me. Um, I was there for 30 minutes later, and the U-Haul lady never came, and that's when I rushed over there. Okay. All right, let me ask you, because I already know the answer to this, and, and you uh -huh. know it too, to be correct. <clears throat> we know Jeremy has guns, real guns. Have you ever seen him out working and carrying a real gun with him? Um, for the monsters, I've seen him carry his pepper ball gun. Um, I know other officers, they do carry their gun. Um, obviously, I don't have a gun. I've never carried one. Okay, so wait. Um, but when you yeah. say gun, you say pepper ball gun, and then you say they carry guns. Yeah. Distinguish um, like, between like the Al two. Um, Al Alan, um, Alan Smith, he's carried his Glock before. Randall's carried his Glock. Um, uh, Steven has never carried his Glock, his gun, because... He didn't have his G license at the time. Everything was being suspended because of his whole Orange County thing. Um, he had his pepper ball, um, but a couple of employees did have their guns on him, and sometimes they had it under under their uh, inside their motorcycle um, basket, or some of them had it into in their holster. Like old employees, um, there was a short Spanish guy, and he had his Glock on a level three holster, and obviously he he he, well, he was security, but he had his gun on all the time. Um, but honestly, I've never seen Jay with a gun. Um, I've always seen him wear his pepper gun. I know he wears it out in public all the time when he goes to Starbucks. He wears his jeans, his, uh, his Metro State t-shirt, and he wears his uh, pepper ball gun on the side and walks into businesses. I've seen that target. Well, why does he do that? Does he want them to think he's a cop? Um, I, would, I, would, I don't know. I would think so because like, I've seen him in, in track plant. Track plant. Yeah, he wears his gun in his badge. Yeah, his gun in his badge and his, his Metro State t-shirt. Yeah. He walks in public. I've seen him in Target one time. I was day out of work. And I walked in and talked to my girlfriend, and I was like, oh, look, Jay's here. And he had his gun, his badge, and his, his Metro Day t-shirt on top. And I was like, oh. But only he said pepper ball guns, he said, are technically, they're legal for self-defense purposes. I, I was never that stupid to carry one out in public. Because you would get stopped no matter what. It looked like a gun. And, uh, so you've never seen that. any of Jeremy's actual guns? No, I've, I've been in his inventory before, and most of them I've seen is all pepper ball or BB gun. Okay. Have you ever seen, like, an M4 or any rifles that he carries um, or has had? Yeah, at, at the old office at OBT and Shader, 
Um, he had a container that was mainly airsoft, and I've seen some look-alike M4s in there, and I've took them out before, and they're actually like airsoft, well, airsoft guns. Okay, so he just has them to look like they're real rifles? To look like, because, yes, yeah, the orange tip is, um, is, is either spray painted or it's shaved off. Okay. So, so I asked him, I said, I said, what's this container? He's like, oh, it's my airsoft, or what he was completely say, it's a military helmet. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so there was some M4s, MP5, um, there was pistols in there, there was, you know, the BB guns were inside of the holsters, um, he had military fatigues in there, um, and it was all in a separate basket. And that basket, now, it's not in the new office, it's not there anymore. Okay. <clears throat> Hold on a second, let me write that down. Uh-huh. All right, let me, I'm going to ask you, were you with uh -huh. him when you all went to Denny's? Denny's, 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 Denny
and the fact that they argue so much and, and he opened up his own landscape business so that he's been doing that. And I work with him sometimes doing landscaping now, uh, once in a while, and, and every time I mention Metro, I'm like, yeah, you know, Jessica's not there, and he, and he gets mad to hear the fact that that Jay's doing this to us. Like, I told him that he owes me $600, and he's like, he's like, dog, he's like, that's what pisses me off. He's like, because my brother did the same thing to me. He owed me money, and he didn't pay me. And to this day, he still owes me $1,000. He never paid me, and I'm his brother. So, is Jess still involved? Uh, I know she's involved with the ambulance stuff, but I know she's been working supposedly at some bail bonds office. She's been interning because they want to open up a bail bonds agency, Metro State Bail Bonds. Um, and that's why she's interning. But I don't know where she, I know she's interning somewhere by the jail. Um, but I haven't seen her at the office like the other day because Jay's wife called me. And I was like, I don't know the number was. She's not being voice. She said, hey, it's me, Ronnie. Can you call me? And I was like, okay, why his wife called me? His wife called me and said, hey, do you know of Jessica being around? She's like, I know you're, you're a young kid. You're real honest. She's like, I really want to know. And I said, honestly, I said, I know Jay used to talk to her a while ago. I said, I haven't seen her at the office. And I knew Jay was in the background because I heard him in the background. And I don't know if they were, they were testing me, but she started crying and she started cursing at him. And, you know, I've never seen Jess. It's been a while since I've seen Jess. Um, so, and, and my attorney... Back then, um, Jay had me. I used to work. I used to live in Old Cheney Highway, and Jay had me park an ambulance there. And it, it's just a, a red and white ambulance with paint all over and damage. He had me park it there, and my attorney said, "Listen, you need to get rid of the ambulance." I said, "I've been trying to get a hold of him, and it, and my land. I, currently, I don't live there anymore. My landlord's like, listen, I, I'm going to tow it this week, or you get it out." I said, "I said, do what you got to do." I said because I said he does not want this ambulance. So I called Jessica. I said, Jessica. I said, I got an ambulance at my house. He wants me to store it here. I said, I already moved out the house. I said, what do you want me to do? She goes, I don't give a F because I don't talk to that guy anymore. I have nothing to do with the ambulance anymore. She said, call his wife or call him. She said, because I'm done with it. So what happened to the ambulance? It's still, it's still sitting at my house. Let me ask you. Yeah. When she says she doesn't have anything to do with him anymore, was that on or, or about like November 1st or 2nd? That was... Uh, like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it was a couple weeks ago, yeah. I called her. And the reason I was saying that in, Jay was in, I think Jay was in jail. Jay was in jail, I think. Okay. Okay. So, um, she said she wanted to do it, and I told my landlord, I said, do what you got to do. The only reason I'm saying that, just to put on the record, is um, we noticed on Sunday she took herself off. Yeah. That's what he told me the other day. He said, <clears> I said, <throat> said, why don't you tell the landlord? He's like, I can't because Jeff has a partnership. And other employees were like, oh, well, forget what she said. She's gone. And he's like, oh, well, she supposedly took off now, so she's not part of it no more. Okay. So the only person that's still part of it is Mike? Is, uh, Mike, Jay, and his wife. His wife's about to about to sign on to the business soon. Okay. So. Um, because there's, oh, sorry. How, go ahead. Um, there's an employee named Star, Star Yukon. Um, she actually affiliates with the wife. She talks to the wife a lot. I met with her the other day. I go to her house sometimes. And she told me that her wife, that Jay's wife is about to become partnership with Amazon business and they want to take over. So basically Jay and his wife are now, are now going to try to invest money into it and start up this ambulance company. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, how much, how much uh, d did Mike put into it? Do you know? Oh, not that I know of, no. But he, I, but, know, I, I know it costs a lot of money, though. I've seen the insurance, the insurance bills. I've seen the equipment cost for everything. And I know Jay don't got a lot of money for that. Um, but I know Dr. Rivera, I know, I think, I think, I know he's helping out with the contract. Um, but my guy, I know, like Jay said that day, the grand opening, he said, this guy right here is the, is the reason why we're starting up the ambulance business. Okay, so let me ask you, how much, when you say it costs a lot of money, what's a lot of money? Um, I think the ambulance insurance bill, it's 20 grand a month for the two ambulances that he has currently. Um, and then he said he paid about nine grand for each ambulance. Um, the stretcher, he paid 12 grand. Cause you know, back when I said, when I sold up on eBay, I seen his purchase history and most of the stuff he's purchased is, is the stuff and he gets everything off of government deals.com. Um, and he buys everything off there. It's, they, and these AEDs and these stretchers and these lights, he's paid lots of money for these things. Um, and I'm surprised that he's got this money, but he doesn't have the money to pay employees. Right. But it's, it's true. It, the ambulance business alone is almost a million dollars 
open up. I, I looked up in my research for AMR. It's almost thirteen million dollars for them to open up a business. I know Jay don't got a million dollars, um, so obviously he's getting help somehow. And you don't know where he's getting it from? Not that I know. No, like I said, the Mike guy, the Mike guy today that I met him at the grand opening. He said that this is the reason why we're opening the business because of this guy right here. And I met, and I, that's why I met him that that day. It was him, Dr. Rivera, Dr. Rivera's daughter, and then the Mike guy. Okay. And all those files and records, those things were in his computer as well. In his computer, or they're on his email. Most of them, most of them are on his email. Um, I know recently when I went to the office, he deleted a lot of his email because he used to have a thousand inbox messages. And they were all on red, and all of a sudden now they're all gone. Everything's gone. How long ago was that? This was recently, maybe like a week ago. Well, what's his email? Uh, the Metro State VPU at Gmail, Metro State ESU at Gmail. Oh, sorry, he's got a bunch. Of, there's, yeah. a, there's a, a shit ton. Sorry for my. <clears throat> there's a lot of emails from Metro State. Was that? Metro State. Huh? Was that before or after we arrested him? After, after you arrested him and he bonded out and he went back to the office. So it was after we did the search warrant on his office? Yeah. What did he say about when we did the search warrant? Um, he, well, he didn't really say nothing. Cause I know I, I went to the office um, when he was there. Cause I think we had escorts that day. And he was like, oh, they took everything. Um, he said they took the body cameras. They took the cameras. He said we can't do escorts. And he was like, he was like I think it's a setup. Um, he said, because why would they take the dash cameras and, and, and leave and leave only two cameras? Because I guess they left two cameras there, um, two, uh, two motorcycle cameras. And I was like, well, I don't know. And he was like, well, I think it's a setup. He was like, I have to look around the office. And he started going crazy. He started looking around the office, looking for little cameras everywhere. He was looking under cars. He started looking underneath the ambulances to check if there was any jet, G GPS tracking, any cameras anywhere. But that day that he went back to office, he was, he was going nuts. And I know he took pictures of the office. He went sent to his attorney and said that that you know they went through stuff that wasn't on the warrant. Like what? Like I know he said the file the filing cabinet. He said there was stuff in there that was missing, and he said it looked like stuff that was rummaged through. And he said when I looked at the he said when he looked at the warrant, he said it was mainly for the body cameras, removable storage. But then again, I read him the part that listen. I said this part says any documents that state. You're impersonating law enforcement. I said, I said, then they're allowed to rummage through there because I said, how do you know there's not something in there that there's a document stating that he's a state agency or whatever? And he was like, and he, you know, he made jokes. He said, dog, what do you work for, Fiddler? And I'm like, no, I don't work for Fiddler. I'm like, hey, and they we man the meeting. He patted me and Stephen down for wires. He, he pulled us aside and he patted us down. Okay. And I was like, what do you want this for? And he was like, I gotta make sure you're not wearing a wire. And I was like, like, I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I'm not wearing a wire. Um, and he made us give us give us our phones and everything, and had it and, and, and held everything for us. He thought we were recording him. Okay. Here's a side note. Uh -huh. <clears throat> side note here. I left my sunglasses. Did he find them? Um, I, I heard about that. He, he told me when he went to the office <laughs> that you called him, and he made a joke. He was like, oh. Ramsey said he left his glasses, supposedly they're Oakley's, and and that they have some type of de detail on the side. And and he mentioned, what, maybe we went to the office next week. He said, oh, I can't find the glasses. All of a sudden, he started blaming me, uh, Steven, ASAP, and Joe. He's like, oh, which one of y'all took his glasses? And and Joe said, oh, well, he left it anyway. So even if even if Jay took it, it it's it technically Metro State's property. So... <laughs> Okay. Um, and Jay mentioned the other day when I went to the office, he was like, did you take it? I said, no, I didn't take it. I didn't even know they were here. I said, you didn't tell us until two or three days later when he called you. And all of a sudden, that day when he called you, they were missing that day. And you were the only one at the office, and I told him. I said, you were the first one at the office. And all of a sudden, they're missing, and you're blaming me? <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so once, all of a sudden, they're, they're missing. Once, yeah. once he got back and he realized we served the search warrant on his office and he thought we had taken stuff or we had done something, uh, he went back to work just like nothing happened doing escorts? Yeah, he went, went back to work doing like nothing. And he said that, that Miller stated to him that, that we are allowed to do escorts. Uh, one car in the front, if there's more than 50 cars, 10 cars, and there's patrol cars, 10 cars, and there's patrol cars, one in the rear. And somebody said, oh, well, that's not in writing, so how do you know it's true? And Jay was like, well, I don't care. We need to keep our business, and we need to show them that we're still up and running, that they can't stop our business because they're just the sheriff's office. Only the mayor of Orlando can stop the sheriff's office, and they can shut down the business. And that's why the 
attorney, they called his attorney, put it on speaker, and that was the first time I heard his attorney ever. And he said the sheriff's office could not shut down the business. He said, if I was you, keep running your escort, keep doing everything as, as, as you used to do, maybe change it a little bit, do what he's telling you to do, even though it's not in writing. But he said the sheriff's office could not shut down your business. They can harass you, you know, they can stop you, tell you you're not allowed to hold green lights, not hold red lights. You know, that's the only thing they can do. Which he said, but they cannot shut down your business. Which attorney was this? Um, not I don't know a voice, but I know I, I know he was talking to someone. But every time I every time he mentioned, he always mentioned Mike or or me or Dad. He always okay. mentioned those two guys. But the last one he mentioned, and I, I don't think I have to text. I don't think I, I know he sent out the screenshot for a couple people, and it was from Mike, and stating that Mike said that it, that you guys are being harassed. Continue doing as you're doing. Okay. So that was from Mike. That was from Mike. I remember he sent a he sent a text that he sent out to a supervisor chat, and one I think Stephen was the one that told me he's like, dog, you think Mike's saying that we can do this? He's like, he's like, honestly, I think it's a setup because he says right now I can't trust Jay at all because Jay keeps the fact that Jay keeps thinking that we're snitching, meanwhile we're really not. Which at that point we were really scared, and he was like, dog, you have nothing to be scared about. He said they're coming after me. They don't care about you guys. Um, so. He kept thinking that we were snitching, meanwhile we really weren't, um, so he wouldn't really tell us. But down the supervisor chat, he mentioned Mike's name on that chat. Now, what funeral homes or what businesses that you work for uh, have stopped using you? Uh, I know Dob stopped using us recently, um, and he told us, he called, he called everybody on the phone on the group call, and he said Dob stopped using us because they said that the family wants to use Curtis, which, which, and I was like, and I told him, I said, well, it's weird, I said, because they just used us the other day. And that was the day, oh, no, that wasn't the day we got messed with. Um, but Dobbs stopped using us. Um, Stephen noticed that Pax Miller stopped using us the day that Miller came with Drew that day. Um, and I guess she noticed. She hasn't been calling anymore. Um, a community funeral home, uh, I, I think they're using, they just got, he just, we were supposed to have sat, escorts on Saturday, this Saturday. And he said, he sent out a text today and said all, all Saturday escorts got canceled. And I was like, why is that? And I called him. I said, hey, I said, why did it get canceled? He's like, oh, because the funeral home's canceled us. And he didn't explain why. He was pissed and he hanged up on me. Okay. So, uh, obviously, the funeral homes are canceled. Just for the yeah. record, you know, I, I want him to know. That's and Ramsey, you know, oh, yeah, I, I'm going to yeah. show you that picture in a minute. Um, just for the record, um, anytime uh, Corporal Ramsey or I talk to Jay, um, we've always explained to him that he's got a great concept. He's got a need in the community that all we've ever wanted him to do going back, you know, when I've dealt with him is to run it legally, Yeah. to to get his licenses, get the appropriate insurances, get his workers' comp, pay his taxes, and and, uh, and do the escorts within the law. Yeah. And, and that's all we've ever wanted. Um, in no time have we, as the sheriff's office, ever wanted to shut him yeah. down. That, that, that's not our goal. Our goal is to get him to come in compliance with the laws. And in those laws, he has to, you know, get his insurances, get his licenses, get his taxes, just like every other person. Yeah, correct. And, and that's been the goal. Um, but, um, hey, real quick, um, I just wanted to show you this, this photograph. Um, again, I'm, I'm showing him a photograph that was sent to me um, where... Uh, Victor is, is out of his, is, is in the Tahoe, the church in the orange water fell. So, yeah. 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 Um, anyways, um, in the, in the, on this particular escort, um, you were witnessed, um, uh, uh, this was a, a couple of weeks ago, you were witnessed, um, going the wrong direction on Orange Boston Trail. Uh, uh, yeah, on the other side of traffic. Um, so anyway, yeah. um, we all, all discussed this. Oh, like, oh, yeah. Like, like, I'm, like I'm off the side of the road, but right. it was probably no did, you, did you receive some citations for that? Yeah, okay. All right. Um, anyway, as far as... Uh, get back to here. There you go. Um, where was I going to go with it? Because I know... I know Oh, as far as the company, oh, oh. You know, that's all we have. Yes, we're wanted. interviewing. We're yeah, interviewing him right now. Why we're in good state statute? Um, hey, um, talking about go Victor. Ahead. Go talking ahead, about John. Victor. John. 
Hold on a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, let, let, let me ask you a couple of questions here real yes. quick going back. He, going back he, to the he, date uh, of the 16th he, he involving Deputy Mahoney. Last night and said he wanted to talk. Um, uh, the, oh, yeah, that, yeah. Actually doing uh, I'm up obviously, so we're doing you, a you, uh, you were part of it. Um, you actually pulled up to Mahoney and said something to the fact to get out of the car. No, not me. I'm being 100% on my day grandmother. I was the lead star the whole way. Right. And I and I can probably act like turning out. I don't want to. But I have it on dash cam footage. Okay, I never said anything. Okay, he did. Okay. And then what was, I know after. I'll talk to you later today. After, um, did, did you see the intersection that, that the, where the incident happened? Or happened, yeah. Okay. I was <laughs> coming up. Um, well, actually, well, I was, I was in the rear. Actually, no, I was in front of him. And that's when Steven said, listen, there was a car coming up and he popped in the procession. And I was like, well, where are we going? He's like, well, stay with the lead car. And I came up to the intersection right on that dam right where, where Jay was. And Jay was on this side. I was here. It was a two lane and he was in the middle of the intersection. And I saw the truck coming up, and truck did rear him, but Jay did, you know, jump at him. Yeah, well, you know, what, I'm, I'm, what I'm going to get at uh -huh. is, I'm going to, I, I can draw it out for you, but yeah. you're familiar with that. Um, where that intersection happened is what we call like a four-lane roadway. Yeah. There's two either east, west, or two uh -huh. north, south. Um, the funeral possession was in the, the left lane going through the intersection. I can show you the, the video. Yeah, I'm trying to think. You know, we, you know, when we, we went there, so we merged over to the left. Right. Um, Jeremy in his Tahoe, because he was driving Tahoe, yeah. was in the right through lane. Was, was blocking the right through lane. Yeah, right there, right. He was in, like, in the middle, basically. The car on that side can't make a right. The car's right there. Right. Or they can't draw the Yeah, they can't draw yeah. yeah, uh, You see in the video where yeah. he takes off and he can, you can actually drive straight through his yeah. right. Um, why, why does Jeremy have you guys block if the funeral's in the left lane or the funeral's in the right lane, why do you guys block the other lane? He said when we go through training fifty fifty, so if, if, if this is the intersection is a big intersection and they're going if we if we're making a left, we'll go in the left lane and we're on the right so we'll have a unit right here and then a unit on the outside of the road blocking blocking the whole intersection basically. He wants to block everything down so the funeral can get through. So start the cars start moving. That's when he's like, listen, once the light cycles, we go. He's like, light cycling, we'll get out the car and then put our hands up like that. And we'll, the motors will do that. Sometimes when I do it, I get out and I start putting my hands up. And he's like, if a car starts moving toward your direction, tell them to stop because they're going to hit the procession. Um, so. Well, and, and what I'm going is anytime that you guys get out of your vehicle, you're actually kind of a toll yeah. camp, which uh, we're going to go over state statute. And I know you've got to leave soon. No, anyway. it's fine. It's fine. Um, okay. um, but where I'm going with this, the state statute states that, for example, if you're in a right turn lane, okay, if you're in a through, through lane and you're turning right, you must turn the curve lane to curve lane. In other words, you must have, you must turn into the curve. So if, there's, if you're going northbound and you're going to turn eastbound, okay, and it's two lanes northbound, it's two lanes eastbound, that funeral procession, let's say, is in the right lane yeah. to make the right entry, it must turn into the right curve lane. Yeah. Why do you guys block the people going through the left lane? In the left, right, he said he wants he wants to lock down the whole intersection. He wants yeah, to lock down the right. He doesn't allow anybody. Yeah, he doesn't want anybody. To Same thing off. when a funeral procession is turning left. If I say if a funeral procession is in two lanes going southbound, and it's in, it's going to make a turn into two lanes going eastbound. Yeah. Okay. Um, it must go left inside lane to left inside lane. It can't scoot over to the yeah. right lane. It must go left inside. And I've seen in many, many videos where you guys are blocked, even though yeah, blocked. you won't even let the people turn it right. Yeah. Yeah. Legally, yeah. He won't allow you to like that. Right. Right. He tells us, he's like, when we get in there, he says, stop all traffic, no cars are to move at all. And sometimes that, you know, I've done, I've, I've, heard, I've heard the cars beat the horns at me. And I'll look over and I'm like, well, what do I do? You know, I'm just, I'm just, I just stand there. Sometimes I, I will tell them, go right, go right. There, there are lots of go right. But I've seen some, some of us, that he's like, or, or even me, and Jay tells us, if, if we're here in the rear of the rear vehicle, and we're at a light, and car is moving up on us, he'll be like, I'm like, Jay, there's a car behind me, he's off ass. He's like, well, tell him to go right. And I'm like, yeah, but he's going straight. Well, tell him to go right anyway. And I'm like, you know, huh? that way, that way, start directing cars that way. Right, are you ready, John? Yes, yes. Yeah, go ahead. All right, Victor. When it comes to your pay, 
Has he ever withheld any taxes out of your check or told you he was or anybody else's? What do you mean? Like, uh, in other words, like basically saying we're not paying taxes. Well, like, let's say he's got a, he tells you he's got to withhold FICA or he's got to hold, withhold oh. Social Security or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I never, I never, honestly, I don't, I don't even know what those words mean, to be honest. Like, my mom filed all my taxes for me. Um, but he's, on the every Saturday, he just pays us and that's it. And either you deposit it in your bank or you go to Amazon and cash it. Um, so when he writes you a check, let's just, I'm going to throw just a figure out there. Say you get a, say a job, you're going to get paid $70 for that job. Yeah. <clears throat> he doesn't give you like $65. Say, I have a total of $5 for Social no. Security or for mm -hmm. uh, IRS. Uh, okay, and he doesn't give you any IRS statements mm -hmm. or anything no, like that, no. or any withhold for fight or, or mm -hmm. Social Security mm -hmm. or, uh, or federal withhold taxes or anything. Uh, he, and at the end of the year, he doesn't give you a 1099 no. showing how much you made no. for his company. Because my mom, my mom did mention that. She was like, do you file taxes? I'm like, no. She was like, well, how are you getting paid up? Well, company checks. And, well, what does he have to write on it? Washing cars or fixing cameras? And she's like, well, if you're cashing into Amazon, all that's getting reported to the IRS. They're out, they're going to wonder, why are you getting paid big amounts, but no taxes are being taken out? Um, and she's like, well, if they question you, then that's your fault. You're over the jury team, so they do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah, so. Go ahead, John. Okay, so Victor. Uh -huh. So if I pull up behind you in my car, and I have an unmarked car, you know that, correct? Yeah. Okay, so if I pull up behind you in my unmarked car, which is white, has no markings uh -huh. of the sheriff's office on it, and I turn on my lights and my sirens, what are you going to do? Um, I've dealt with this in the past. No, no, no. Uh -huh. What What are you going to do? Oh. It's a oh. question. Like they're, like, like they're an escort? No. You're driving down the road. I pull up behind you. Oh. Why would you pull over? Because it's red and blue light. And what else? And, I don't know, it's a, well, it's an unmarked vehicle, but the thing is you don't know if it's a cop or not. But most of the times, if you're in a busy street or in a, in a city area, I would say it's a cop. I would pull over. So if, um, you, if you hear the siren going, or my, if I, I hit my air horn and I turn on those lights, you're going to pull over? Yeah. Okay. And because you're assuming it's a police officer? Yeah, I would. Okay. So when you all are doing your escorts, have you ever pulled anybody over? And when I say no, pull over, listen, when I say pull over, do not confuse you telling somebody to get out of a funeral escort. If you direct them in a certain direction, have you ever done that? Yes, I have. Okay. Have you ever used your lights and your siren or your horn to do that? Uh, yes, I have. And when I say horn, I mean it's the the air horn or the uh, the modification of the siren that makes a bonking sound, correct? Bonking. Yeah, basically just the, the air horn button on the console. It has air horn. Um, correct. If you, but there's no there's there's no air that goes through it. It's just a digital change in the yeah. in the speaker, correct? Yeah. And it is louder than what a normal horn is, correct? Yeah, a lot louder. So a certain amount of de de decibels. But I know, I know the state law for for those. But I would think it's a lot louder than state law, um, because he mounts two speakers, and most deputies usually have one speaker. Correct. Um, but his are a lot louder in the vehicle. Okay. So, have you ever used your lights and your sirens, or your air horn, uh, to to pull somebody over? To pull someone over. If there's a car in front of me during an escort. Um, I will tell, I'll, I'm going to be honest, I will tell Jay, listen to the car in front of me, we'll turn your, turn your sirens on and, and tell the car to move over. And I would use the word move over. I wouldn't use pull over. I will use move over. Um, because Jer Jeremy and other guys have mentioned, listen, you can't use the word pull over. I you use the word move, move over. Okay, but so. You're, you're, still, you're, you're still telling the vehicle to move over. It's still, you're still impersonating no matter what. No matter what the word you're telling just can you get over, you're still, you're still activating lights and sirens. And you're still telling the vehicle to get over. So, and you drive the uh, ghost car, right? Sometimes I drive the ghost. Sometimes I drive the Impala. Sometimes I drive the Ring. I drive whichever, honestly, not whichever car I want. Um, okay. But I drive different cars. But you're not most, you don't have a motorcycle. Oh, no. Okay. So, I, I'm going to give you a description of a date, and, and we'll get, I'll get more into it. So, there was a particular date where uh, you all were doing an escort. You came down Princeton to Mills at the intersection of Princeton and Mills. 
turning right or south onto Mills. There was a white Honda in front of you, uh, and you got on the PA. Jeremy had already gone into the intersection on a red light and stopped the uh, traffic. And he, he was telling people to go, and you needed to get around. You were in the white ghost car. And you told the person on the PA with all your lights on and hitting the air horn, you move told over. them, move over. Yeah. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, I remember that. Okay. Um, and and do you remember... Oh, sorry. Do you remember that being Jeremy in the intersection? Yes, that was Jeremy in the intersection, yes. Okay, so... That, that's another thing. He did mention to me that, that, that recently. He said, if the sheriff's office asked you about that day, tell them that the same story that he told you guys that me and him were across town. Um, and meanwhile, I, meanwhile, that wasn't Princeton and Mills. That was all the way in, uh, in, uh, in OBT, all the way down by, um, I figured by, somewhere by Treeport. And it was a Muslim, it was a Muslim territory because that's when we had, there was two Chevy Suburbans, the lead car, and they had thin blue line, like, thin blue line, like, uh, stickers. Um, because I remember that road. Um, and that was in one of the videos I was on the news also, where you see me holding the intersection. And Jay comes, well, not the intersection, but the little side street, the lead cars go, and Jay comes up, and he's like, go, go, go. And you see me kind of struggling to get inside the car, and that's when I'm coming up. He goes past me, gets into the intersection, there's a car in front of me, and he's like, well, move the car. I go on the PM, like, move over, move over. That was another like, one. Oh, that's a whole separate one. Yeah, that's a whole separate oh, one, okay. correct? The, oh, this okay. one, this one was, this is the one where you went to Sanford afterwards. Do you remember going to Sanford after this one, and then you, uh, that's when he talked to the lady on the phone who called to complain on him? Um, I heard about the complaint recently, and that's when he said that he's stating that he, his body cameras record 24 hours. No, they really don't. I, my body camera goes off as soon as I'm done with that score. Um, but honestly, I do not remember. You, obviously, you do have videos. Sergeant Miller, do you have that video right there? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Can, can you pull it up and let's show him so he can verify this? Yeah. Um, I gotta find. I got. I've got the. I'm gonna have to do some research on, on getting that that number of that video. I got the number. I got the number. You just tell me when you're ready. Yeah, because I'm being honest with you. I we do so many escorts and pampers. No, I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. This one started in Orlando, over off of Edgewater, I believe, and you traveled yeah. down Mills South underneath the 408 to the funeral home okay. or the funeral cemetery down there. The funeral started on Edgewater? I believe, yeah, it was Edgewater. Think what's on Edgewater. I'm going to tell you in a second. Hold on, I'm going to pull up the video. Yeah. And... Fine, because I'll, I'll remember a little bit more. Yeah. Well, while I'm looking for this, i got a couple questions for him. Um, at any time, uh, or for example, on... Uh,
down on with the... Uh, okay, when you do find it, it's going to be file 157. Alright, I think I got that thumb drive. Um, I, uh, there, there's, and, and you said you guys had a meeting at, at the Florida Mall. At the Florida Mall, I learned with that. Um, right after his arrest, I believe. Yeah, I would think so. Um, okay. the, the question that I have is, um, any time has he told you guys that you can't, as far as identifying him, Wait, can't um, okay, I've, I've got the files. Now, which file is it? It's uh, 157. Okay, I got it. And I'll tell you, go to, I'll tell you the time on it so you can go right to it. Okay, is that Jeremy Boyd? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, I remember. I know that church. It's the Catholic church. The yes, church. yes. You know what? Yeah. Uh, you know what go church. to. Uh, start off at 9 minutes and 51 seconds. And then you can show him the rest of it if he needs to see it, but go to that spot. And then it'll play through the intersection. Yeah, that's right there. Okay. Okay, I'm going to stop just a second right here. Hey everybody, and while they stop that, let me butt in here really quick and just say thank you for watching PT's Far Removed Uncle. I appreciate you hanging out, watching the Jeremy DeWitt case interview with Victor Lopez and Corporal John Ramsey and Sergeant Keith Vidler right here on the Police Tube Video Network. Okay, see that sign right there? Of course, I said back there. Now, notice he enters the intersection on the red. He takes that off. Is that, is that you, Victor, coming up behind that car? Yes, that's me. Okay. And is that Jeremy in the intersection? Yes, that's him. And how do you know that's Jeremy? Because um, of his voice and plus his two watches on him. Um, he wears his, his Samsung watch the way I have it facing toward him. Um, and his other, his other watch, I know his gloves and especially his ginger hair also. I, 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 I know, as I said, I upload the footage uh, and I... I know how his voice sounds. I know what he looks like. Okay, so you know... You know you, for four years. I don't know. Is there anybody else working that day when he would closely resemble him? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. so me? So any guy? Yeah. Do you, do you recognize him through his, his voice, his facial, his, his hair on hair, the watch, the way his setup is? Okay, and, and, and also, is this based off what you're seeing on the video, or is it based off your memory? Based off my memory. I remember, yeah, I know. I remember yeah, I know. you've never seen uh -huh. him in the intersection. No doubt that's yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember I said I I also all the footage and I know and I know his voice. I know exactly every I know every employee. I can identify every employee on a video. Now, is, uh, is, is it a common practice for employees to to change out cameras? Do people have assigned cameras? Um or does they have assigned cameras, they change out They do? They do. What would be a reason that they would change out? Um Either one, like motor motor one is, is Jay's, motor two is Drew, motor three is Alan, motor four is another guy. Um, so usually most people don't touch their camera. But sometimes they change out either because the mount breaks or anything, then they'll change it. If the battery's done, the memory card's dead, 
or it doesn't work, they'll change the body cam. But it's rare. With 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 uh, <clears throat> with Jay being, you know, motor one, motor commander, the owner of the business, the guy who's running any of this, would there be any reason for him to not have a piece of equipment? What do you mean, like take it home with him? No, no, no. I mean to 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 need a piece of equipment for somebody else. You ever seen him use a piece of equipment for somebody else? Yeah, well, not that I've seen him, but I remember when I upload the footage, I've seen other body cameras with him in it. And I'm like, this is not your camera. He's wearing another body, wearing another body camera. camera. No, another, another helmet camera. Exactly. He, this, does, he have a, does he have a helmet that he takes the helmet? Yeah, so that's his. Would yeah. he be upset if somebody else was using his camera? Yeah, he would. Okay, so it's okay for him to use somebody else's yeah. camera. Yeah. But it's not, you know, okay, not for, else for someone yeah. yeah. Hey, Jay. Let me get your camera because mine's dead. Would that yeah, be something that yeah, he lied? Right. No, he absolutely not. Nobody, right. nobody, nobody else would use his camera ever. No, no. no. but he could use whoever he else. Okay, so if you saw, if you saw, if you saw a video, much like you did there, where Jay is the one wearing the camera, and and there's, you know, that's Jay's camera. Okay. There's no reason for anybody else to use it. Yeah. Because okay. like, I know, like Jay said, they have, they, his, his attorney said that they can use voice analysts and all that. And, but all day I can identify it. Every employee on, on, on a body camera, dash camera. I, I, know who, I know who has their assigned dash cameras, their body cameras. I know who wears what. Do you think Jay's a very smart guy? <laughs> um, sometimes he does some. Dumb our dog brilliance, but generally yeah. speaking, who, uh, who's smarter, you or Jay? Me. You? Yeah. Just based off what? Your, your education? Uh, my education and prior experience with not that, like with police explorers, you know, I, I have a lot of family in law enforcement in New York. I always grew up, I wanted to be a cop. Um, even the photography stuff, I've always, you know, done right along with security companies. You know, I know, I know the internet in and out. Business and all that stuff. Okay. Hey, I'm going to show him another video real quick, uh, uh, John. Which video? Uh, reference to the uh, Virginia case. Oh, that, that's what I was going to tell you. 165 is the video. Go to 1851. Oh, I got it. Uh, okay. Tell me who's, who's voice this is and who's on this motorcycle. Okay. What the fuck? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'll pass for it. Okay. Um, John, go ahead. All right, so Victor, with that uh -huh. said, do you remember, so you remember the incident with the white car, correct? Yeah. All right. Do you remember, uh, <clears throat> let's see, do you remember going to Sanford after that for another escort? Uh, I remember the escort, but honestly don't remember going to Sanford. Like I said, we, we do a lot of escorts going to Sanford. Okay, if so video, go, to, go to, go uh, to, uh, Villa, go to video, let me see, I think it's 160, F file 160. Were you talking to the plane? Yes. Go to file 160. That's what I understand. Okay, great. So, okay, so, so it's right in the view that, or you. Who are you talking right now? Okay. Yeah, do you recall being there for that? No, I don't. I honestly don't, do not recall, to be honest. I really don't. Because I know that some of his employees are there. We can see them. but uh, That's yeah. why I just don't remember seeing you. I wanted to know. Did he ever talk yeah. about that? Um, no, not that I know. But I know he talks about other instances where people call. And obviously, he's the one that answers. Is it normal for him that when there's a complaint on a company, when somebody's called a complaint, is it normal for him to videotape that complaint? Because my landline's starting to die, so I'm going to call you okay. right now. Just answer, and we'll switch over. Okay. Are you there? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, Victor, you remember that call or that that uh, escort, and where you saw Jeremy pull into that intersection, and he clearly was telling that woman to uh, stop there, and you were telling her to move. Correct. Okay. Did he ever tell you to uh, not tell us if we ever interviewed you? Did he ever tell you to tell us something other than what occurred? Yeah, uh, yes, all, all the time. Like I said, like, over the today, that the incident with, like, with, with me and him on escort, OBD, he said to tell the alerts or whoever interviews you that you were on an escort on the other side of town. So, because so, obviously his story matched up with my story, yeah. But um, he's always told me, if you're going to interview, make sure you say what I say so they can believe you. Okay, so after... And I, and I told him, I said, listen, I'm the, most of the time, I'm the one with the vet. I said, they know what I look like. They know what I, they know what I talk to. They encountered me before. I said, I said, they're not dumb. He goes, okay, but as long as you tell them um, that you're, 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 you weren't there, then you're good. So, what, so has he told has, has he told other employees to do the same thing that if we ever question him yeah, to to tell them that I think was his story yeah to, that don't ad, don't identify anybody um say we were across town or okay. we were never there that day or that's not us they can't see our faces they can't prove it okay all right okay, so let me ask you after he was arrested and he got out of jail and you said that uh, he had a meeting with you all is that correct yeah. Yeah, that was at the, at the Florida Mall. Okay, 
Where at at the Florida Mall? At the Florida Mall, it was right on J.C. Tenney and Sears, right on the side. Did you all see a vehicle there with the red light blinking? Uh, red light blinking. Um, like I said, me, I, with, with, with my knowledge of taking pictures of long bus vehicles, I saw a lot of vehicles there that looked like on marks. Um, I saw an F-150 there with a guy sitting in it, and he was sitting there the whole time for an hour and a half sitting there. And, and Jay was looking at him for a while, and he, and he said, guys, don't look over there, but there's an F-150 right behind me, and he hasn't got out of his vehicle. And another F-150 pulled up, and another one, and another Ford Explorer pulled up, and no one was getting out of their vehicle. And I said, and I, I, I said to him, I said, Jay, I said, I don't feel comfortable. I want to go. He goes, no, we're not doing anything wrong. We're just talking. We're just having a meeting. There's nothing going on. I'm like, well, they're watching us, obviously. He's like, well, he's like, dog, relax. Did he tell you or any of the other employees that day then that if interviewed to say that Jeremy was not there or that it was not him in an escort? The day, the day, the day of the meeting? Yes. Or? On the day of the meeting, yeah, uh, Jerry said he, he said that they questioned us to say that obviously, you know, he wasn't working that day or he wasn't on that side of town. But obviously, Jerry said, I know his voice, and most of the time, I'm on escorts with him or Steven's on escorts with him, the main people, because lately, I haven't been on escorts with him anymore. Steven has, and sometimes I'm on escorts with him, but mainly I stick with Jay or he sticks with Jay. Or sometimes we stick with other people, but. He's told us many times that the sheriff's office or anybody questions them, just tell them the same thing I told them, that you weren't there and I weren't there because they can't identify your faces on video. But on this specific any, day... Any, anyone could be driving that car. Correct. But on this specific day, did you all talk specifically about uh, any incidents that he had been involved in and he told you not to tell the truth? Uh, the day of the Florida Mall, he... I don't, not that I'm aware of, but he always spoke about was Ken, I know Ken, the lion, he spoke about the uniforms. He said, what do you, what do you guys want to do? What do you think? Everybody's throwing some suggestions. What do you think we should take off? And then we said we should take off everything, just leave the shirt and the pants. And Jay was like, oh, well, you guys can't do that because my company, my policy, I don't think it's a good idea. I think we should keep everything on because if they would have came for us, they would have came for us. But, you know, he did say some things that, about past situations, he's like, listen, you know, they came for me. He mentioned um, a lot of things about how the guy came for him, the, the warrant. Um, he's like, you know, they're watching us. He's like, I'm going to let you guys know. He's like, don't be scared, but they're, they're going to be watching us wherever we go. They know your personal car. They know where you live. So if they, if they stop you or anything, just start recording. Okay, so did he talk about the Dr. Phillips incident? Did he tell anybody to... Uh... The winter game? No, 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 about Dr. Phillips, because what happened is, is uh, Corporal Ramsey showed him a video of uh, me filming him and Dr. Phillips and Wallace. He was doing an escort from the church on You were hiding behind a sign? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. told me about that, yeah. Okay, what did he tell you about that? He today? said, I think it was Randall that was there and someone there, because Randall mentioned it. Randall said that supposedly they got a video and you could see Builder hiding behind a sign and he's recording. And they started laughing, and they just said, they're watching us. You know, they're going to be watching us for a while. And he said they had nothing better to do. So, did he mention anything as far as identifying him? Because on the video that, that Corporal Ramsey showed him, I, I, I know I know yeah. Jeremy. And uh, I saw right by on the bike. Uh -huh. And I saw Jeremy pulling the intersection and blocking the car from proceeding eastbound, even though the funeral position was going westbound. And like we just said, isn't that normal? He blocks that. Yeah, he blocks everything. So
Okay, so that's okay. So during now that we established that you, you know what we're talking about, during your meeting at the Florida Mall, did he instruct anybody to not acknowledge that he was there that day, if asked? Did he ever say, I wasn't there? He said, they're trying to say I was there, but I wasn't there? Uh -uh, no, I don't think he ever mentioned that. I think everybody knew he was there. He sent out a text to all the employees and half of them didn't show up. So everybody knew he was there and I knew he was there, but he never said to tell law enforcement he was there. Okay. So everybody knew he was there and he said he didn't care if the cops knew he was there, obviously. Okay. Okay. No, we're getting quite, he's got to leave at last. Have you ever seen Jeremy pull anybody over? Uh, a lot of times, yes. Um, the same intersection on Princeton and Mill right there. Um, one time I was in my personal car going home, and he was in the Tahoe, and there was a car there, and, and he, the car ran the red light, and what he did was chase them with no lights on. He went to the light himself, pulled up next to her, and 
and my light was officially going green. I went up, and, and there he is, stopped by south of the vehicle, letting him know, hey, you just ran a red light, idiot. Um, you're going to get a red light ticket camera. Um, there was one, what, two years ago at, a, at, a, at the, um, um, over there by what we just, uh, police funeral for, um, over there by uh, uh, Cape Canaveral for one of the deputies over there that died. Um, we did a funeral escort through there. And there was a motorcycle, big heavy tail a motorcycle guy with his wife on a big old Harley. And he kept cutting in. And Jay reached for his, his pepper ball gun and, and was holding his bike. He had his hands on his bike, on the, on the handle, and was forcing him back and telling him, get out of my intersection, get out of my intersection, you can't do this. And the white guy's like, I'll beat the hell out of you. And he's like, I don't care. And you see him grabbing one hand on the bike and one hand on his gun, and he's just holding it like that. And I was driving by, and I was like, oh, shit, I was like, this is getting intense. Um, and he was there for a while dealing with the guy. And he told the guy, he said, pull over the side and stay right there until my last car comes by. He kept on driving. So I've seen a lot of times where cars will run red lights that are not part of the procession, and he'll go up next to him with light, his lights on, he'll slow down, stop in the middle of the intersection, wait for us to go by, and let that car know, hey, listen, just to let you know, you're going to get a red, red light ticket because you ran the red light with us. Right. So, has he, uh, so what you're saying is he's done it during funeral escorts and he's also pulled cars over when you're not doing yeah and not doing any escorts. He how many times have you seen him reach for his gun like that? A lot. Because he he he, he said because we used to make jokes because he's got his little fake radio. Obviously we know none of these radios work. During escorts he would start reaching for his radio and start turning the dial like he's talking to someone. And I'll make a joke and I'm like, who are you talking to? And he goes, oh you're funny, right? And I'm like, well, it's true. These radios don't work. So what are you, what are you switching on the dial for? He's like, oh, it's a habit. I used to be in law enforcement, so it's a habit to reach for my radio. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so he, I've seen him reach for his gun a lot, and reach for his radio, and reach for his baton, and all that. Um, act like he's actually gonna do something. Um, but I've never seen him pull it out before. Right. But but. Right, and, and that's an allegation. You don't mind, John. That's the allegation. The uh, uh, deputy is yes, that, that he was—he had his hand on his firearm in, in a threatening manner. So you're saying that is common practice when he's walking. Sometimes he'll hold it when he goes to go hold it, or if he's on an intersection, stop traffic, he'll hold it. If someone—if someone's in a confrontation, a confrontation, that's the first thing he's right there, yeah, right there. Holding so why, it. why would you? Why would you? Why would he do that? Um, how people think. Obviously, the cops. So right. yeah, uh, listen, if you, if, you, if you keep resisting, or I remember one escort where it shows a fat one, it's talking a computer body camera, and the lady just speaks no English. And he was like, stop your car, stop your car. And he's like, you know what, give me your license. And she was just speaking Spanish, and he's like, give me your license now. And she didn't understand it. He's like, you know what, get out of my escort and go. And he kept on driving. So he's the man, I've seen him the man license before on video, uh, reach for four for his, for his pepper ball gun or his weapon. Um, a lot of times, actually. A lot. Go ahead, John. So, he's basically pulled people over and asked for their licenses. Yeah, and I, I, have, I don't know if that video is still on the computer, but I remember seeing that video because it was it was a Spanish lady and we were on Hiawassee and uh, over in the garden going, going to Woodlawn. And it was, this was a while ago, though. Okay. All right, and... Uh, that's why I asked you earlier if you've ever noticed that he actually carries a real gun. Yeah. I, I know there was a statement, supposedly, that he dated some lady in Universal, or he saw some, like, he mentioned that a while ago. He said that he met a lady at the Hard Rock Cafe, and he accidentally forgot that his firearm was on, and he told the girl that, I guess he was a police officer, and he has to go put his gun back in his car. So he went back to his car and put his gun away. That's what he told me, that, that the lady ended up making a statement or something like that. Um, or, or he was dating some girl, but I remember him telling me that, or telling everybody that. Well, right. I'm talking about the firearms, do you know if Jeremy ever goes to shoot straight with, with... He went with Jessica recently. Uh, you know, he was uh, about a month, about, no, about seven or eight months ago, because he hanged it on his wall wall in the old office. Huh? And it was Target, where he was targeting him, Yeah. yeah. Alright, go ahead, John, I'm sorry. That's okay. So he goes to shoot straight with Jess? Yeah, he goes to shoot with John. I don't know if he hasn't been in a while, but I remember he went to shoot with Jess recently, like seven months ago, and he hanged it on his wall. Him and Jessica went shooting. Okay. Have you ever gone with him? Oh, no. no, no. I, I don't have a
guys don't have a date. I'll be, you guys know my record and my grand theft. That's why I, I try to apply for my DMV, but I'm too scared. I'm going to get denied. So I don't I don't have any guns except for that pepper ball gun. Okay. All right. Uh, do you know... Let's see. Hey, Dave, do you have any questions while I try to form some questions here? Okay. Do you do you understand that you're here today as a as a witness and a cooperating witness? I'm a witness. Yes, I do. Yes. Okay. And so so everything you told us today has been completely truthful, right? Yes. Yes, it is. And nobody has promised or coerced you into anything to make you uh, come in today and talk to no, us, correct? No. Everything was at my own will. Um, just because, like I said, I have a feeling my attorney doesn't care for me. Not saying that he doesn't care for me, but it's just the fact that he doesn't want me to talk. The first day he wanted me to talk. Obviously, I told Bill that I was, I was scared. I was because my priors was a lot worse, and I'm scared of being arrested. I was, I was scared that I was, I was about to pass out that day that I got detained. Um, so you know, I did it off of my own will. Um, because I, it's like my mom said. She said you don't want to go down because of something that this company is putting you into. Okay. Are you? Um, and that's be right. Okay. Are you scared of Jeremy? Fear that he's going to take some type of physical. Uh, physical, like he does know where I live at. You know, he, he knows everything about me. Um, so I'm um, just, I, that's why we were scared at first because we were, we were trying to wait to see because Reverend Bill said that Jay was going to be in jail soon. We were going to wait until then, but we didn't know how long that was going to be. Um, but again, like, you know, he told us recently while working with him, he said, and like I said, he, he patted us down. So obviously, he's not, he doesn't trust us because he thinks we're going to snitch on him. Um, and he still tells us to this day, he goes, listen, you guys snitch on me, we're coming after you. I'm coming after you, and, and we're, we're going to find something to come after you for. Do you think he would send anybody else after you, or just he would come after you? I, would, I, would, I think he would just come after me, him personally, only because the way how his anger is, I know how his anger is, I know how my anger is, but I've seen some violent things between him and females. Like what? Body camera footage. Um, at the old office, I've seen him getting into fights with females before, arguing with females, going to dump biatches, um, you know, and he records all this. I've seen him get into a lot of arguments with a lot of females, mainly. It's never male, but most of his exes that he's had, I've seen him get into altercations with them. Not, not physical, but... John, I got a question for him real quick. Um, when we were interviewing Jeremy, um, he provided a video of uh, the incident between him and the deputy that was a screenshot of a screenshot of a screenshot, I guess. And while we were interviewing him, he said he was caught. I think he called you during the interview. Were you the one that sent him the screenshot? Of the no. Okay. I, I remember it. It was a screenshot of a picture of you, right? No. So it was a picture of the incident involving the deputy where he's yelling at the deputy to get out of the, the funeral, the off-duty deputy. I know. Steven took pictures with his phone because I was in the lead car the whole way. Okay. And I had my window down the whole way. Um, I never, I never interfered with the deputy because I remember that day I went, we, me and ASAP went, me and ASAP and Recycle went straight to the cemetery. I know he stopped first to let PD go through and we went to the cemetery and Jay was on the phone call. So he said, guys, did you get here? He said, any light? Pull in the parking lot. And so you, do you know at any time, has he ever altered a video 
that on a lot of times yeah. that, that has been used as evidence like in court or given to the sheriff's office or whatever. And has he ever edited that video? There was one with you um, where you were in Lake County following uh, Rebo Durango and you were in front of him and you kept driving around with an iron pad and he had he had an editing software he edited some of the some of some of the that wasn't really part of you but he edited the part where you were coming on the outside of the road turning in into the procession and he edited it from there. And he edited it from there on to when he turned off on some road. Did he edit that video to take the sound of the siren off? Yeah he had he had the sound the sound cut off on the video. So that it was only showed just the car. Just the car So the video that he provided the agency of that incident wasn't an accurate uh, depiction of what really occurred. What really occurred, yeah. It, you know, it, just, it, it just shows you on, I don't know if it was you, but he's been tiled with you. Um, but cause he, he knows your vehicle supposedly with the Orange County sticker and all that. Um, so he said that supposedly that was you because it was Lake County, you live in Lake County. He said, um, so he said that when you got you on the opposite side, the rain was coming this way, you turned in and, and didn't want the rain to pass. Um, so he, that's why he said, he said, listen, I need to edit this video so I can turn it into the sheriff's office and show that this was a sign of harassment. Okay. He's not letting him has, has Jeremy made any, like, threats as far as, you know, because obviously it's that he's aware that uh, Corporal Ramsey and I are, are investigating this company. Has there any been made any threats that, that he was going to try to do harm to any of us yeah. or any of law enforcement? One time. Okay. Yeah. And what was that? Um, recently we were going to pick up the tow truck from the tow truck guy and, um, somewhere by uh, Bipolo. Um, I, was, I, I mentioned, Joe, you know, I was like, oh, so what happened with the other you know, the tow truck? And he was like, well, you know, they, they, came and, they came and all that stuff. Um, and he said that if he had a lot of stuff going on in his mind, and I was like, oh, well, what's going on with the other? And he was like, well, listen, he's like, he's like, I trust you. He's like, there's no basket in there. Everything was taken. But he's like, if I had a chance one day or, or something, or if I had some type of truck that wasn't registered in my name, he said it would be like the movies. Run them over and keep on driving. Um, and I, 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 I don't remember the exact date, but it was the day we, we came to pick up the tow truck from the guy's yard. And I was, I was in the Tahoe way. Oh, I'm sorry, Jenna. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, so, you, so you do believe that uh, he would carry out uh, some type of violent act if he thought you or Steven had talked to us? Yeah. Okay. I, I, and, I would. And he has so expressed... Like yeah, and he has expressed that to you. Yeah. Okay. Was, this was this was like the the, the whole altercation when when he said that this was maybe a year and a half when we went to hold off using a shader and he said it to me and Stephen. Um, only got to the office and then he only said it. He said it to us at the new office a while ago when he pulled us both in separate. He was like, I really hope that you guys are not are not snitching because if you guys are snitching and messing on my business, I'm gonna come after you. I'm going to sue you for every penny you got. Okay. So he, he said financially, or did you also believe physically? Uh, physically, from, from the day we went to old office. Okay. Financially at the new office. Okay. So let's go to the video real quick. You talked about he alters videos. Uh, does he uh -huh. do that? Does he alter videos for court, or does he alter them just to alter them, or what does he do it for? Um, he altered the one for Bill, obviously, because he put it onto a flash drive. That flash drive, that's the one my attorney has. My attorney has, the attorney has, and, and Jay has those. They have purchased the flash drive. And he also that video to put it onto the flash drive. And I was working that day with Steven and, and Randall, and we were all there that day, but Randall didn't get a copy because they thought Randall was snitching. Um, but anyway, that was the topic. But he altered a lot of videos on there. He basically put it onto a flash drive so he can give to his attorney, Dan or Mike, whichever. Okay, so when he altered the video with Vidler, did you help him with that, or did, was he capable yes, of doing that? I was, I was, I was there. He was on the computer, and I was on the computer. He, he has software, and he asked me, "Do I use the software?" I said, "Yes, I do." And I was there with him, helping him. But he was the main one, basically telling me what part to edit, what part not to edit. Um, do you want audio? And I, and I said, I said, "Do you want audio?" And he said, "No, I don't want no audio." I don't want nothing showing of us leaving that for us, us holding the intersection. I want us, I want the video basically just showing Miller blocking our unit from not getting new traffic. Okay, so. Said, I don't want the air horn. He said the repo guy was blowing on the air horn like crazy. So he said, I don't want no audio of that because he said that he can get him 
or something like that. Miss, miss use of siren or horn. So he he told you to alter it to put Sergeant Vidler in a bad light to make him look like he was in a doing. Bad, in a bad light, yeah, so he can so he can bring it to the attorney and bring it to internal affairs because he says what he did and he wasn't in uniform supposedly and he was in an unmarked in his personal vehicle that Vidler was harassing him that day by not letting his funeral go through. So do you think if he had taken the actual video without edits? Do you think that that would have made a difference if he had taken it to the sheriff's office? Uh, no. I, I think they would have still looked at him because they blocked the intersection for both ways. When they left the church, they blocked the intersection. When they got to the intersection, um, and then however long the, the funeral went, I know I edited it from when, when Miller cut into the procession till he turned off on a road, and then he had to stop right there. He, he didn't want no more. He didn't want the when Miller turned off, he didn't want nothing from there. He wanted from he turned off, and that's it. So what I... So if he had actually put the, if he had given the actual video, Metro State would not have looked good. Is that why he had you alter it? Yeah, they, would not look, they would not look good at all. So he wanted you to, so he wanted you to alter it to make Sergeant Vidler look bad. Look bad, yeah. Did he you tell you that? that? Did he tell? Okay. Did he tell you that? Did he tell you he wanted you to um, make the video so it made Vidler look bad? Yes, he said he, his words exactly. He stated that he wanted to make the video like this so he could bring it to Internal Affairs and we can make a report against Vidler because what Vidler was doing was harassment and 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 um, what's the word? Uh, and, um, something with with his company trying to shut it down, have it shut down. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, do you know, has he ever had you assist him in altering any videos that he was going to court for a ticket? Um, for a ticket? Yes, I have. I've, I've helped him, but not with trying to, like, um... You're not going to get in trouble. Listen, Victor, huh? you're not going to get in trouble for it. But I, I already know. That's why yeah. I'm asking the question. I just want you to tell me, in your words, what occurred. Yes, yes, I have. I have helped him edit videos before. A lot of videos, you know, of, of him doing escorts or him breaking the intersection where he would want me to cut the video out at a certain point of him not him doing illegal stuff and him showing that there was a funeral escort going by the light and that it was legal. So you would have me cut the video at a certain point and end it at a certain point. And supposedly said that this is the full video, the only full video, and that the dash cam stopped working from and only recorded that much. So he, he's done that to mislead the courts? Mislead the courts and had and had, and had me delete the other footage, the, the original video, and made sure that it was deleted. And okay. that the edited video was on the flash drive. Okay, so, so he's basically had you alter uh, evidence that puts him yeah, in a bad basically. light. Okay. Alright, uh, let's see. Oh, here. So, do you, I only got a couple more questions and we can be done. Can you hear me, Victor? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Do you hire or fire anybody? No. Uh, I, I, I only, I carry business cards on me sometimes. And if I'm in, like, like if I'm in stores and I see a guy with a motorcycle, I'll be like, hey, this is my owner. His name's Jay DeWet. Um. He told me to give this card if I see a motor guy. If you're interested in the job, it's an on-call job. It's $50 for the first escort, 25 positional. But if you're on a 98, 98 probation, if you wear a green shirt, uh, you start off on a KC1000, um, and this is it. I gave him the card, and I said, listen, I said, but my boss is saying that you come in for the interview, you you would say that you were referred by photo, which is my nickname, photo. Um, so, but I've never fired anyone. I have, I'm, in, I'm in no spot to fire anyone. Okay, so... Do you handle complaints when somebody calls to complain no. about Metro State? No, no, I never, I never do. Do you do you give discipline if somebody messes up? Do you give discipline like suspend them or, uh, t you know, uh, take money from them for work or no, anything uh, like that? No, I've never disciplined anyone. I know if if someone messes up on an escort, like um, Andrew Andrew Ross stated, um, I, if I've been there for four years and 
I left the company and new employees came. Obviously, my boss said it's seniority, um, and obviously you're at the bottom even though you've been there longer. Um, he ran through, told me, he said, listen, if someone messes up and you know they're messing up, let them know. Even though you're just a nobody, you're just a regular officer at first, he said, let them know what they're doing. He said, obviously, you can't discipline them, but just let them know that if they keep doing it, you're going to let the supervisors know so they can discipline you. Who does the firing and who handles the complaints? Uh, Jay, Jeremy, uh, back when Jessica worked there, she, she did a lot of the firing and a lot of the complaints. And she was a, she was actually the internal affairs. She was in charge of all of that. Um, so you have even, never been the IA? Uh, you you never been the internal affairs person? No, I was always the IT person. I okay. never handled any complaints, never answered the phone. So obviously I had to call Jay's phone. Um, but I've always done the IT stuff. Okay, so I, I know you know I interviewed Jeremy a few months ago, a couple of months ago, before he was arrested. Uh, he told us during that interview that you were the one who handled all the firing, that you handled all the complaints if somebody called in a complaint, and that you would discipline, meaning you would suspend uh, or cut people's hours. Uh, no, that's yeah, that's I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to cut you off, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, that's wrong. I know Stephen is internal affairs, he does all that. Um, I just strictly do IT and all that. I don't, we don't even have set hours for work. That's one thing that's confusing. We don't have set hours. We, we go to work, sometimes we're on an escort for six hours straight. I've lost my job before from being on an escort for seven hours because the family did not want to come out and the paramedics came. And, you know, we don't have set hours to stop. Um, and I know for a matter of fact, I've never done complaints. I've never fired people because obviously I'm in no place to fire anyone because like like everybody says in the company, you stole from the company before because he told everybody I stole from the company. Nobody trusted me. So every time, even even when I saw the footage, nobody trusted me to do it. Okay. So I'm, I, I know for a matter of fact, because I know when Jeremy filed the workers' comp stuff, he showed us and he spelled my name wrong. He spelled a lot of people's names wrong. I don't know if it was on purpose or what, but you know, like he told us, he said, sometimes the office goes, he said, I don't even remember your name. You know, he says, I refer to you guys as Hordo, Recycle, and all that. But personally, I don't think he knows my name because when he filed the workers' comp, he spelled my name completely wrong and it wasn't even to what my name looked like. Well, I'll let you in on a secret. He did that so that it would be harder for the workers' comp person to find you to interview you. Yeah. So he I, knows. Like I, said, I saw a lot of names on there that. That I was like, that's not Andrew's name. That's not this guy's name, you know. And there was a lot, and even his brother. He put his brother on there. And his brother worked there. His brother hasn't been there in a year and a half. And he put his brother was making money with him. Yeah. So yeah, then that's it. So, all right. Uh, let's see. How do when you all communicate? How do you communicate? Um, on on the phone, and we have a well, he had an app called GroupMe, and we he started that up, and we all talked to an app. Um, while on escorts, we all connected on a conference call on the phone. So one person will call two people, and another person will call two people, and everybody on call. So one day on, on charity events, we have to two people on call. So what does group meet? Group meet, it's, it's like a WhatsApp. So that's like a uh, like a group chat, right? Like a group chat, work, a work group chat where you can set scheduling on there. Um, you can put photos on there, create different chats for supervisors. Better do you have that? Um, so you can just get... huh? Do you have that stuff on your phone still? Um, I know we stopped using it over a month ago already since you got arrested. We never used it anymore. Um, so everybody deleted it, but you can still sign in to things and, and view chat. Uh, no, no, I don't have it anymore. Okay. No, I don't have it anymore. Do you have any text of him telling you that he needs you to come change videos around or do anything um, else you that do? Day, that day, no. He only texted me that day. Um, but I keep a lot of messages. Um, and he's never texted me about deleting things. Um, he basically just texts us for escorts. Usually when he wants to talk to us about it, He'll, he'll call us on the phone or he'll meet us in person and talk to us about this stuff. Okay. All right. That, that's all I have for you, unless anybody else has anything for you. Yeah. Um, um, Whoa. No, I think, I think, I think we're pretty much like, uh, I texted Jay about the uh, three stuff. Yeah. And I put that Connie's out of town. 
Um, yeah, they said that, do I need to come in today? She said that she doesn't know anything about it being Dark Alley. Um, and that Connie thought that this was the secretary lady, saying that she never knew Dark Alley was out of town already. All right. All right, so let me remind um, you, Victor, let me remind you. Let me yeah. remind you of something, Victor. So uh -huh. you're here as a witness. If, yeah. you, I'm, if you go back and you discuss this with Jeremy, that's up to you to do. You have a lawyer and you have us. We're telling you that that is unadvisable, okay? Uh -huh. uh, so in order, for, in order for us to be able to help you and you to help yourself, our discussion okay. today is between us. I know that you might like to talk about it and want to talk to somebody. Uh, ha have you talked to Stephen about coming in and talking to us? Um, yeah, we, we were both on the phone yesterday with Builder on a conference call because, like I said, I've known him for a long time. He's been my support since day one with everything through my whole life. Okay, um, so, so don't... We both came in. Um, right, sorry. so that's fine. Uh, we will talk to Stephen as well. Okay, we'll do the same okay. thing with him. Uh, don't be talking to anybody else there that you talk to us. If you do, that's on you. Uh, if you do okay. that and, and anything negative happens because of that, you know, that's out of our yeah. control. It's because you chose yeah. to speak to somebody. I have one question. Okay. Um, I, I know my mom, I'm about to age 18 already, but my mom at first did not want me coming in. Um, she doesn't even know I'm here. Uh -huh. uh, am I allowed to discuss that with her or no? As, as long as you don't think your yeah, mom I, is going to talk to anybody. Advice or any advice like that. Yeah, listen um, to me. But... Listen. As long as you don't think your mom is going to talk to anybody where it might get back to Jeremy. Okay, no, she doesn't, she doesn't affiliate with the boss or the company because she knows she's a sex offender. And, and we have, I have a little sister. And so, and, and the same thing goes with any other employees if you think your mom's going to talk to other employees. Okay. Okay, so... It, it, listen, this is your time. It sucks because you kind of got to keep it to yourself, but it's what's going to pay off for you in the long run. Okay? It's like it's like yeah. you got the winning numbers for the lottery and you know it, but you're not going to tell everybody because if you do, they're going to cut into your money. That's the same thing here. Okay? Yeah. You got the winning lottery ticket that's going to help you. All yeah. right? And you, I have another question. I know with a, uh, a little bit with a witness. You can still work at the company, you just obviously can't say nothing or whatever, or if any, any other charges come by, then, you know, you're, um, Sorry. you're, you're a witness. So if they hear, yeah, yeah Sergeant Miller's going to go over all that with you, so we don't have to do that on the phone together, okay? okay? Uh, okay but I'm, I'm just reminding you of, you know, what what yeah. what you need to keep in mind for moving forward from this point on. Okay. All right. Okay? Okay. Uh, hey, John. Yes. The only thing I'm going to do right now... Um, well, I hang up with you because obviously you're on vacation, and, and I appreciate you taking time to, to uh, be part of this interview. Uh, I'm going to go over the statues with both um, uh, Stephen and uh, Victor here, so they can understand what we're looking at, and so that they're educated moving forward. Okay, so just to remind you, Victor, we've already educated you. We've talked to you on the side of the road and explained it to you. But now what he's going to do is he's going to take the statue itself and piece by piece read it to you. And uh, so that way you understand where, where he's coming from so there's no confusion, okay? okay. All right. All right. Okay. And, yeah, sorry, Victor, when you're done, just give me a call later on. All right. and, uh, yeah, it's 1125, and uh, I'm hanging up with, with uh, Corporal Ramsey. All right, thank you. Okay. Hey everybody, so thanks for watching this interview here on Police Tubes Far Removed Uncle on YouTube. I appreciate you hanging around. I'm putting my 800 number up on the screen so you can check it out. Link is down in the description of important details that I want you to check out, so make sure you look into that as well. Thanks for watching, and as always, have yourself a great day.